shovel before you can be disheveled. Yeah. Well, I, was, I, yeah I was never shoveled. You're right. All right. Setting it's up tough. the meeting live. We're getting ready to go. So hang in there, everybody. Shovel is not a word. Shovel is a word, right? No. Nope. Not. It's yeah. not. Uh, am I not on? Nope. All right. Setting it's up the meeting live. We're getting ready to go. So hang in there, everybody. I hear you, Lynn, but I don't see it. I what just heard mean? shoveled is a word, right? No. Maybe no. Don't. Now we're talking about shoveled again. Why is that? How happening? do I get myself to be seen? <laughs> Who shoveled? You're gonna get. Wait, I can't get myself on. Oh wait. I hear you. <laughs> Better than not being able to get yourself off. There you go. Now you're, I that, did that already. You're all shoveled. I did that, that already. Who shoveled? Wait, I can't get myself on. Oh, wait. Major delay. It's, it's a weird delay. Yeah. Hi, Blue G. All right. So I so bear with me, everybody. All right. So we are live on YouTube. I keep hearing I keep hearing Lynn over and over again. Yeah. Like you're on, here. Lynn. You're on. <laughs> you're on. We're on. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. I turn off the reverb on the uh, amp. I turn the reverb. <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> I'm crying. Yeah. Manja, Nick, manja. Yeah. On the uh, amp. I don't know what to say. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. So apparently we are live, but I gotta I gotta figure out how we. Yeah. Yeah. Because I've got the Zoom line going, and the YouTube is going. Yeah, there's somewhere in there there's a delay, like somehow. Right, which so is weird. Apparently we are live. But I gotta I gotta figure out how we yeah, yeah, because I've got the zoom line. Uh-uh. It's a it's a it's a long delay too. It's a long delay. Yeah, it's a very long reverb. Yeah. Right, so weird. Apparently we are live. It's gotta be the audio settings, like maybe the line in settings. Yeah, something like that. Everybody's uh -huh. watching bear with us here. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a long delay too. It's a long delay. Yeah, it's a very long reverb. <laughs> I can't stop laughing. That is pretty funny. That is very funny. <laughs> Sydney's losing it. <laughs> All right, Sydney and I have the giggles. <laughs> I can't stop laughing. Man, that's funny. Oh, God. Echo, echo, echo. Dizzy's copying me. <laughs> All right, Sydney and I have to giggle. So. Well, we have like 200 and something people watching. I mean, that's a cool thing, but watching, watching, watching the delay. Watching us fuck around with the light. Maggots, people. Copying me. Maggots, Michael. You're eating maggots. Sydney and I did not talk before this watching meeting here. Watching watch, 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 the delay. All right, so everybody, everybody who's on the Maggots, all the Sea Tranquility folks, everybody, put yourself on mute. Maggots, Michael. Okay, mute. Okay, now that we're all on mute. I'm still going to get the delay. That's the weird thing. So welcome, everybody, to our first live uh, Hudson Valley Square show. And uh, we're trying to figure out this whole live feed between the Zoom and the YouTube. And the YouTube is actually hey, on. We're all on mute. So here uh, we go. I'm still going to get the delay. That's the weird thing. So welcome, everybody, to our first live uh, Hudson Valley Square show. And uh, we're trying to figure out this whole live feed between the Zoom and the YouTube. And the YouTube is actually hey, on. We're all on mute. So here we go. Still get the delay. That's all right. the weird thing. Bear Welcome with me, guys. To our first live uh, Hunter Valley Square show. And, and uh, we're trying to figure out this whole live feed between the Zoom and the YouTube. And the YouTube is actually now on mute. So here we All go. Right. All right. I'm going to see if I can get it up on another computer. That might work. Bear with us, everybody. We will figure this out. Let's see if I can get it up on another computer. That might work. 
Bear with us, everybody. We will figure this out. See if I can get it up on another. That might work. Bear with us, everybody. We will figure this out. All right. All right. It's taking forever. forever I got a loop I might have figured it out here. I got a loop. Okay. All right. So I have us up on another computer. So with the volume down. So I think we're good. I think we're good. Uh, let me just let me just make sure that my um, I'm just going to kill this other one here. Okay, I think we're good. Everybody's laughing. Right, so I have us up on another computer. So with the volume down, so I think we're good. I think we're good. Why is it still coming uh, through? Let me, just, let me just make sure that my- Do um, you hear me? Other one here. Pete, can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, I can. I think we're good. I think it's the same thing like when you call a radio station with the, with the radio on in the background on the phone. You're getting that loop delay from your computer like you're thinking. Yeah, I don't know why. Can you mute the YouTube? Is that possible or does it make you have the audio? Uh, I don't even have YouTube on this computer anymore. Same thing like when you call a radio station. You're getting that loop delay from your computer like you're thinking. Can you mute the YouTube? Is that possible or just to make you have the audio? Uh, I don't even have YouTube on this computer anymore. Yeah, I don't even know where this, where this, uh, where it's coming from. The computer that you're speaking on is the volume down lower? It's kind of like, I think it's like a feedback thing. Yeah, see, I don't know where it's coming from. So on, I have YouTube on the other computer with the volume down, so it's not recording anything from there. So we should only be going through the Zoom. Right. But for whatever reason, I keep hearing that loop going, even though I don't have YouTube on this computer at all. So it's really bizarre. Yeah, see, I don't know where it's coming from. So on, I have <laughs> it just keeps doing YouTube it. YouTube on the other computer with the volume down, so it's not recording anything from there. I'm trying to Google this too, Pete, and figure it out. All right, out. let's try. I, I think I just took care of it. Okay. It's about, it was about a 23 second loop. Okay. I think we're good now. I was timing it. <laughs> we're good now. All right. Finally. <laughs> All right. Let's restart. So, 12 minutes of mayhem. Uh, welcome, everybody, to the first live See a Tranquility uh, Hudson Valley Square's Monday Night Must See TV. We finally figured it out. Uh, so, tonight we do have a topic. All right. Uh, the topic for today.
Steve, what's up? I see Steve raising. No, nope. Steve's just saying hello. Showing off. Well, let's say hello to everybody. So we've got we've got Ryan, we've got Chris, we've got Sydney, Butch, we've got Steve, and returning for a week hiatus to both of them, we got Nick and Lynn. Welcome back, guys. Woo -hoo. Woo -hoo. What's up? Uh, everybody is here. So uh, the topic of today is our favorite guest star appearances on songs or albums whatever so in other words you got a band you love they had a someone came in and sang a song with them or played a guitar solo or dual guest vocals whether it's a live album a studio album a hit, a hit single whatever doesn't really matter that's going to be the topic of today what we're going to do i'm going to be kind of going through the um the comments in the in the, uh, the chat room so in between everybody's kind of answers here uh, if you guys have a question a specific question kind of relating to the topic for any of the squares uh just pop it in the uh, chat room i'm not gonna we're not gonna be able to answer everybody's questions guys so just you know keep me cos cognizant of that we do have 400 people already watching us so uh there's a lot of people i'm sure so uh we're gonna start off how about uh the folks who uh let's see chris you've gone last the last couple of weeks so mr allo you're gonna start off first today woohoo that way, yes. I'm gonna I'm gonna chew up the scenery for the next 30 minutes. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm kidding. No. I'm kidding. I'm, I'll make this quick because I don't want to put anybody to sleep like last week. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> so uh, I was starting to tell uh, Sydney and Pete before we went live, like like 35 years ago before there was YouTube, there was me. Like before you could like just look up like any kind of band and watch a video. Uh, I was trading uh, video cassettes and audio cassettes with people around the country, demos, live stuff. And, um, you know, sometimes guys would throw something extra on a tape if you, uh, you were nice. You know, you had, to, you had to do shit like send letters through the mail, which took forever. So I get this, I get this um, bootleg Sabbath cassette. And on the end, there's these two songs. And I'm like, what? I'm like, well, what is this? And it was, it was Ronnie James Dio, but it sounded awesome. But like it, it definitely sounded, you know, it wasn't like like some old croaky elf bootleg or something. I'm like, it sounded really good, but I had no idea what it was. It was kind of proggy. There was heavy keyboards. Um, anyway, I, I, I found out later on through writing back and forth with this guy that um, right after recording uh, the Heaven and Hell record uh, with uh, Black Sabbath, uh, Ronnie James Dio uh, recorded two um, solo songs for uh, Kerry Livgren of, uh, of Kansas. And they're fucking awesome songs. Uh, it's uh, Mask of the Great Deceiver, which is like the, the, heavy, the heavier song, and uh, To Live for the King, which is the mellower track. And I mean, I didn't know shit about Kansas. I still don't. I know there's a guy with an afro, and there's a guy with a patch, and um, there's Dust in the Wind. And uh, this is the record, uh, and there's it's two fucking killer tracks, and uh, there's even an interview on this version uh, with uh, Kerry Livgren where he talks about how weird it was because he apparently was like some super black magic dude in the 70s, and then he became a born-again Christian, and he thought it would be so cool to have uh, the singer of Black Sabbath sing this like anti- satan pro god songs but they're really great songs doesn't matter what they're uh what they're about and uh it's really cool so those are my that's my first pick uh these two dio songs uh on the kerry livgren solo record called seeds of change which <clears throat> i guess must have come out uh right around the time of heaven and hell cool very cool nice Pretty awesome and before know, we really get to ryan we have uh, a couple of welcome backs to lynn and nick all right and uh, from a few people. And uh, we got a question for Steve. Steve, when are you going to open up a rock fantasy store in New Jersey? <laughs> there you go. Uh, maybe in another alternative life. Uh, I don't plan on opening any more locations. <laughs> I'm a pretty old guy and we've got one store and we do have a website, rockfantasy.com. If you'd like to you know, order some stuff online, but I really don't see me opening a store in new jersey there was talks of us op uh, of a rock fantasy store being help open in the la area last year but that kind of fizzled out with the covid thing no i did not i wasn't going to be there but uh someone else was going to try to use the name and kind of recreate our magic in middletown in the big you're city not that, you're not that far from jersey steve you're only like an hour from jersey yeah. really 
Well, well depends. Depend. No, I mean, we can, we can be in Jersey in 15 minutes. It depends where in Jersey we're driving, Chris. You know, like it could be three hours to drive to the south tip or four hours to drive down by, you know, Cape May or something. So, yeah, it depends where you are in Jersey. We're not too far if you want to take a ride up. Yeah, for sure. Day trip or something. <clears throat> All right, Ryan, what's your uh, first pick today? All right. So uh, late 90s, early 2000s, I was really, really into uh, Devin Townsend. First two Strappy and Lad albums, especially the second one, City, when I heard that, blew my fucking mind. And his first couple solo albums, uh, uh, Ocean Machine, which I know Nick loves, Infinity, uh, Terrier. And I kind of fizzled out with him for a while. And actually, I bought two albums, which may, maybe this is a common thing. If you own eight zillion million albums like some of us do, you buy something, you put it on the shelf, you forget you fucking bought it. So uh, I was talking to Nick the other day about Devin Townsend, and I bought an album years ago. I, I totally forgot I owned it. So I dug it out. I'm listening to it. I'm like, this is really good. And it was a Devin Townsend album from, uh, you know, I'm not even really sure what year it was, 2009. 2009, called Addicted. And uh, the vocalist on this album, he's always the vocalist, and he's a great vocalist, but it's uh, Annick Van Kiersbergen from The Gathering. She does vocals on most of the tracks, and her voice is amazing. And uh, it's just, it's a, it's, it's kind of typical music for Devin, but combined with her vocals, uh, I'll just pick one song out, the fifth track called uh, Hyperdrive. If you just oh. want to jump into uh, YouTube just to check it out. Absolutely fantastic. Yes. Like the duet yes. of them, really good. So, yeah, I'm going with the, uh, and I'm like, man, this album was sitting on my shelf for like a decade. I'm probably sure I heard it back then, but you buy a lot of stuff, you know, <clears> you so much space in your brain. So, yeah, my first choice is uh, Anik and Devin Townsend on the Addicted album from the Devin Townsend Project from 2009. Nice. Great nice. choice. Great choice. Great choice. Thank you, sir. Nice. Sydney, we got a comment from Kid Johnny C. Uh, congrats on the great interviews for your podcast. Hearing you talk about discovering so much of the music that us old folks grew up on is so wonderful to listen to. Oh, well, thank you. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, the podcast has been really cool and there's a lot more coming up. I have a bunch of interviews this week. So yeah, stay tuned because uh, it's on a roll. So <laughs> yay. Yeah. And now your pick, your first pick for today, Sydney. All right, so uh, for my first pick, I'm going to go with, I kind of been choosing these, kind of just went off of what was really on the top of my head. I didn't do too much thinking this time around. I kind of just went with what my heart was feeling. Um, so for my number three, I'm going to go with Stevie Nicks um, on Tom Petty, Stop Dragging My Heart Around. Wow. Um, it's really interesting because I, for the longest time, I didn't really like Tom Petty when I was growing up, which is shocking. I wasn't a huge fan of his voice. Um, and as I got older, I really, really, really loved Tom Petty. It kind of like something clicked in me. I know Ryan talks about, uh, I think it's uh, Ryan about Van Halen, how you really couldn't get into Van Halen for a certain period of time. Um, mm -hmm. And so that's kind of what it was like for me for Tom Petty. And one of those days I just put on uh, one of his records and it kind of just clicked for me. Um, and I love Stevie Nicks. I mean, how could you not? She's, you know, Stevie Nicks. Everything about her is magical. So I had to go with that song because obviously one of Tom Petty's probably biggest hits, but um, not my all time favorite guest star appearance, but it's a it's a good one. So um, that's going to be my my first pick for the night. Uh, Stop dragging my heart around. Good choice. That is a good choice. Uh, Ray Liade, I know you're watching. Uh, here's a hug back for you. Stay awake. All right. We got a lot. A lot more coming here. All right, our center square, Mr. Butch Jones. Your turn. <laughs> um, and Butch, we've had a couple people commenting on your bourbon. So you want to show everybody <laughs> what kind of bourbon you're drinking tonight? This is friends of mine locally here in New York. If you can see, I, I'm still perfecting this thing. Um, Taconic Distillery. This is actually their Cabernet Cask um, bourbon and they're in Stanfordville, New York. Um, I go and help them bottle every whenever they bottle. I'm supposed to go tomorrow morning, but it's supposed to snow, so I'm probably not going. But Taconic Distillery, hi guys, and uh, also hi to um, to my new people that have come to the butcher shop on Facebook. So I, I see you guys commenting and stuff. So hey, um, so two things for me. Um, one one of my picks is not going to be what I think most of you are expecting it to be, which is I'm sure it'll get mentioned later. I'll mention it later on. Um, but it's not coming. So if you can figure that out, if you know me from watching this show, you can, I'm sure you can kind of figure that one out. Um, but so, uh, now for something completely different, um, when we did the singer thing a few weeks ago, there was someone that I really wanted to mention. And, you know, there's 
so many vocalists to mention. And honestly, I kind of forgot. I had written it down and I forgot. So she's getting the mention right now. And nobody's seeing this coming. Lynn might, because I actually told her back then that I forgot to mention this, this woman. Um, 1969, the Rolling Stones, one of my favorite Stones songs. I'm not a huge Stones fan. I, I like everyone. I like songs here and there and stuff. But I like the Mick Taylor period. So I do like that. Um, Give Me Shelter. Mary Clayton howls her fucking ass off on that goddamn oh, song. Just... Every time I hear that song, I guess goosebumps. I told Linda about that. It's, you hear her sing that song. Holy shit. It's like they just put the mic there and said, go for it. And she goes for it. Oh my God, does she sound phenomenal on that song? And I that saw, uh, yeah, that's a great one. Um, I went to Live Earth at Giant Stadium when they had it at Giant Stadium in the States and they had it in London, like at the same time. And um, who was it? Keith Urban was playing and he did that. And actually he did a, a complete rock set. He didn't do country at all. I gave, I got so much respect for him. He's a great guitar player. And he had Alicia Keys come out and sing it with him. And I'm like, oh my God, this is gonna be her moment to get the rock crowd to do this, you know, to do Mary Clayton's part. Just, I'm like, I'm just waiting for her to go for it. And she did not go for it whatsoever. And I was disappointed. I'm not an Alicia Keys fan at all. So don't, I'm not going there. I'm just, I was really disappointed that, that someone that is supposed to be so respected and at that time was on the way up and was very popular and all that shit, but she didn't go for it. And uh, to me, that just shows you how great Mary Clayton is on that song because Here's somebody that was selling tons and tons of records and was America's darling, and she didn't even give it a shot. So uh, Mary Clayton on Rolling Stones, Give Me Shelter from 69. That's just fucking amazing. That's a great choice. It's so I only knew that was coming. <laughs> it is a great song. <laughs> Loved it. She's amazing on and that. And Butch, while we still got you, how long have you been an Oilers fan? Oilers fan. I have been an Edmonton Oilers fan since I was 11 years old in 1979. I, I used to be able to watch here in New York um, back on the old black and white TVs with the antennas. Um, we're not far from Connecticut, so I was able to watch um, the, the Hartford Whalers on, oh God, I used to remember the name of the channel too, but it was Channel 3. And ESN. What was it? Nesson. No, it was way before that. This, you're talking oh, really? 79. This is way before that. Oh, wow. I, I forgot the name. I used to know the name of the channel, but I used to be able to get the Hartford Whalers in. And I knew about Gretzky from reading magazines when I was a kid because I've been in the hockey since I was three. And I watched him play against the Hartford Whalers, all hunched over. And he had, a, had a, this thing with Z's and, and names I thought was really cool. And I watched him all hunched over. It looked like he was laboring. And that was it. I saw him play on black and white TV. I'm like, I like that Gretzky guy. And that was in the WHA before they came in in 79-80 into the NHL. So I've been an Oiler fan since the last year of the WHA in 79. Steve Peeler, you're up. It's my turn. <clears throat> yes, yes. Yo-ho, yo-ho, a pirate slave for me. Buccaneers, world champs. So I had to pop that in. Uh, been a Buck fan since 97, I guess somebody asked. But uh, – Anyhow, my number three for tonight is from 2007. It's from a Swedish band called Dark Tranquility. I'm wearing a shirt just in case you want it spelt out. Not that tough. I'm not going way underground like the other guys do. But uh, Neil Siglunds from Theater of Tragedy did guest vocals on The Mundane and The Magic with Michael. And I, that was my number three pick. I've gone on a real... Kind of like maybe I might be stealing some of Nick's picks if I get ahead of him. So. <laughs> because I'm going pretty much Swedish and Finnish bands today. When I got this question last week, I kind of just thought of like, there's a lot of bands that I like that don't have that many guest stuff. And I kind of leaned on this theme for today. And if it was a live performance, I guess I could just go with the government, government mule catalog. So, <laughs> right. Well, that was it. I'm short and sweet today, but uh, I'm drinking box today. I'm, short not, I'm not drinking uh, alcohol tonight, so I'm probably going to be kind of quiet. You're not that short, Steve. Don't put yourself down. So, so speaking of short and sweet, uh, Lynn, what do you got for us here? Oh, oh, uh, <laughs> um, hi everybody. Um, I am 
out of surgery and on the mend. Uh, I was in the hospital last week, so thanks to everyone that shouted me out. Butch, thank you for Woo-hoo. saying, you know, my yada, yada, yada from last week. Uh, but I wanted to tell you guys, so I almost died, um, unfortunately, but thank God I'm still here. You know, you guys talk about all these like evil bands and these messed up names. Well, guess what? I had a fucking necrotic gallbladder inside me. So I was really dead inside. That would actually be a really great name for a band, Necrotic. Yeah, new, well, that's uh, what I said. Oh, so now oh, I'm going to start a band, and I'm going to call it Necrotic Gallbladder. Butch Jones on guitar. You better pat that He's going to be singing for me. Yeah, whole big band I got. Oh, now stuff makes a lot of sense. Dead inside. Now it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Fuck. That is- well, at least now you know. Now she's alive. She's alive. Yay. Yeah. Well, she's anyway, alive. I'm gonna try to hang in as long as I can. You know, I'm in a lot of pain right now. But uh, so in true me fashion, being the crazy Beatles fan that I am, I'm going with the 1968 White Album. I'm going with one of my favorite guitar players, or everyone's America's favorite guitar player, Eric Clapton, on "While My Guitar ah. Gently Weeps." Oh, you don't have to like him. I like him. I like Butch's face there. <laughs> That's a great song. Not really yeah. America's favorite, not really. All right, well, he's my one of my. I like him. Wow. He's a nice man, Mr. Eric Clapton. Nice. So while my guitar <laughs> gently weeps, I mean, it's a beautiful sound. It is. And you know what? He collaborated well with um, Harrison, and I guess he said it represented Harrison's spiritual isolation from the band. And him and Harrison actually collaborated much more after that. So I thought that was a cool thing, and I really love that song. It actually gives me the feels. So. That's my number one pick. Yes, the feels. See, I'm feels. not dead inside anymore. Not dead inside anymore, Butch. Mm-hmm. So that's my number a one. A lot of uh, well wishes, Lynn, from our 530 odd people who are watching right now. Thank so, you. I a appreciate lot of well that. wishes to I'm, you. So. I'm actually happy to be back. It's awesome. And Lynn has the feels. It's have good to feel. have you back, Lynn. Good to have you back. Thank you. Yeah, Lynn, we love you. <laughs> because we need someone to help pick on Butch. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's yeah, gonna, when right I'm better, there. I'm going to go to his house and kick his butt during one of these shows. So. Oh, that should be good. We could, maybe you could sell extra tickets that night, Pete. Uh, yeah. A little, little, little wrestling match. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, sure. We'll do it you in Jell-O or something. Stream. I, I live in the same neighborhood as Butch, so I'll come back Butch up, drop the words. Oh, you, can be, uh, you can well, be the, you can be the special Sydney guest referee. Third man in, Butch. Yes. <laughs> special <laughs> guest referee. Special guest. Get it? The theme tonight. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. So, Mr. Franco, you're next. Also, welcome back. After all right, a week. Yay. it's good to be back. Hi, everybody. So, the first one I'm going to go on. I'm not going to my, you know, Norse <laughs> stuff just yet, Steve. So, just maybe, yet. Yeah. No, I'm actually going to go with uh, something that I, I've always loved. Um, <clears throat> years ago, when I when I heard that, uh, you know, I'd heard of Girl School, the band. Um, and I got to see them at Sweden Rock back in like, oh man, 2000 something, four, five, I don't know, a long time ago. And, and that's when I realized like, wow, you know, these, these are like the first, one of the first female bands to really get going. And um, anyone, you know, who knows them, they're, they're really good. And I love when Lemmy performed Emergency with them. I knew that was coming. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Wow. I love that. When they do, you know, uh, when they do that song together, it's like, freaking it's just awesome because they play it a little faster and it's just phenomenal so i would say like the entire uh motor school head girl all of that together (laughs) when they played each other's songs yeah and they were on top of the pops that was amazing they play the um please don't touch by johnny kidd and the pirates uh that you know it was like a 1959 song they made it sound like a gritty like punk 70s metal type uh song but I'd probably say emergency when it, when it, let me sings with them an emergency is probably my favorite moment. But, um, and I guess the story goes that, uh, Phil, uh, <laughs> fractured his neck or something and their tour was delayed because, you know, they're maniacs. They're always fighting and falling off shit. So, uh, Phil, Phil got hurt. And then the rest of them, you know, I think they, uh, that was the impetus to do this. So, um, just, just an awesome up tempo, gritty, punk type song when they do uh which emergency is a great song and it's probably my favorite song by girls school so to hear lemmy doing it was just an absolute thrill so yes. i'd have to go with 1981's uh emergency with lemmy on vocals by girls school yay 
Fucking yeah. motorhead in middle school. Fucking amazing. I wish I could have seen that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Before hey, I get my pick, we have a question for Ryan. Um, what is your favorite motorhead album? Oh, fuck. Uh, <laughs> geez. Uh, all That's right. from Brett, Brett yeah. Milledeau. That's from Brett Milledeau. That's, that's one of the only bands with that many albums where I can honestly say without blowing smoke up anybody's ass that I like every album. But if you put a gun to my head, make me pick three Motorhead albums. <laughs> no, they don't one. count. Um, no Sleep Till Homer Smith, which is amazing. Uh, Iron that's Fist. One. Uh, There's a gun to your head. There you go. One. 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 Oh, I can only pick one, one album. Oh, fuck. Uh, over. Well, he he oh, said over an album with an S in parentheses. So. Oh. Overkill, Iron Fist, Ace of Spades, Another Perfect Day, Orgasmatron, uh, Bomber, uh, Rock and Roll. Yep. Pretty much everything up to 1916 is. He celebrates the whole catalog. I celebrate the whole catalog, just like Michael Ball. Like Michael Ball. (laughs) Which has a question. I do have a question. Nick, you said, I I actually didn't know this. I know the song "Emergency" because I've heard Motorhead do it. Are you telling me that that's a that's a girl school song? Yeah. Um, with at the risk of uh, sounding like a moron, I I was under the impression that it was. Um, let's see. I'm looking up. I, I'm yeah. I'm fairly certain it is. I thought it was a Motorhead song, and then they just did it together later. I hmm. thought that it was the opposite. I thought that it was. Um, <laughs> let me see. I'm, I'm, looking, I'm cheating and looking it up because <laughs> look it up. Uh, yeah, um, While you're looking that up, I have, a, I have a, we have a question for Chris Allo here. Chris, what did you think of the Ray Gillen version of Sabbath's Eternal Idol album? Uh, I really dug it. Um, I'm not sure if I would uh, say it's better than the, the the Tony Martin. I think if I had to uh, if I had a pick. Uh, I always thought if I had like a, a couple extra hours, I would make the, the best of the two uh, because some some uh, tracks I like Ray Gillen's uh, performance better and some of them uh, on the Tony Martin side I like better. But uh, yeah, both versions I think are great. And um, emergency did you find out the answer? For that? Yeah, Emergency was written by Denise Dufort, the drummer, <clears throat> and uh, Kelly, Kim, all of them. All okay. of them. It's yeah, on, it's on Demolition Boys, correct? Um, released in 1980. Uh, blah, 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 of course, it's on their debut album, eighth track on their debut album. Yeah, I did not know that. I always, yeah, thought, yeah. I always thought Kelly Johnson was cute to, to some extent. Yeah, yeah, Lemmy loved yeah. her and she she passed away. And yes, she did. Yeah, actually, now that I now that I think about it, I saw them at I think it was Walken. Uh, Vakin, um, because she had already passed. Oh, okay. They were. It was like not long after. I think. I think that. Yeah, that's right. Man, I drink a lot. I don't remember a lot of details. <laughs> like, it doesn't make me a bad person. Cheers. Yeah. I'm gonna write down man. this day in history that Butch didn't know something about music because it's the first time I ever ever heard him I, not knowing. Yeah. And then he made. <laughs> I'm just gonna mark this down. <laughs> First time and I, I called ever. myself out on top of it. I, I could have just looked at yeah. slide. I know. I'm so upset that I didn't know it, so I could have called no. you out. But either Don't way. call Steve. He didn't use the thing. Don't it's call it. That's up there. Yeah. Oh, okay. up there. Nobody okay. even okay. sees yeah. that stupid thing. I, I don't even know where it is. They see the hand better. Eh? But uh, yeah. I saw a girl's school hit and run tour, so I'm old. Oh, cool. Hey, you're old. I'm almost it's as old as Steve, buddy. while I got you, uh, I- Someone had a question for Steve. Are you going to be getting in the Black Sabbath and Dio reissues that are coming out? Yeah, we have pre-ordered them uh, for the store, for sure. Oh, yeah. I'm going to get them from you, Steve. I'll buy them from you. That's well, very nice of you, sir. Save me a month. Oh, you're welcome. We just got, we also have the Dehumanizer on vinyl in the shop right now. So Let's I got to get that from you, too. Quite a while. And there's a Black Sabbath volume four that we should be grabbing and soon. That, that, that's another... I don't know how many times, like, you know, the Dio ones haven't been on vinyl for years, so it's great they're coming out. Some of the Ozzy ones, they just seem to get re- reissued every few years, it seems like. Mrs. Osborne. <laughs> you think so? <laughs> All right, real yeah. quick, my uh, my pick, first pick here. Uh, how about some Robert Fripp action on David Bowie's Scary Monsters? I wondered if that was going to show up. 
Wow. Yeah, I had to pick. This is the first thing I thought of. I mean, uh, he's on almost this entire album, and he's That's just playing. He's just savage playing on this album, and it really gives this album. And it's a weird album anyway, but it gives it a really nice edge. So, uh, I mean, I could have picked Fripp any number of times. He's on the Heroes album. He's on Vandegraaff Generator Pawn Hearts. I was like, man, he was popping up all over the place there for a while, but. Uh, I, I don't know. So he's, I think he, you hear the most on this one. So that's, that's my first choice. And I'll turn it back over to Mr. Allo. Oh, uh, I was, I was going to raise my hand uh, because we were uh, talking about the girl school motorhead thing. Uh, I'm not an, a motorhead expert, but if I'm not mistaken, uh, didn't fast Eddie Clark totally hate motorhead working with girl school. I thought no. that's why he quit the band. Yeah, no, that's, that's what right. I remember that it was like, no. it was a big, so it could be a great collaboration, but I'm like, oh man, I actually screwed up that lineup. That's what I thought. I that thought was, it was uh, the Wendy O. Williams thing. So stand by your man. Was it that? Uh, you be, know what? You might be, be right, but it was one of those two. Yeah, it was they, in uh, it was in Lemmy's uh, biography, though. I remember. It was yeah, one I, of those I forget. So the girl I, school I, was way early. Yeah, the girl I, school I, was, I, was way I, early. Where Wendy O. was a little later on. Yeah, I, so, I'm pretty okay. sure it, it was a stand by your man that the Eddie's like, fuck you, I'm out. <laughs> Okay. Oh, well, that's good. Something, but I couldn't remember. But Butch, I think you're right. It was Wendy. Yeah, it was yeah. Wendy. It was. It was. Uh, he disapproved of them covering "Stand by Your Man" with Wendy. Right. All right. Well, there you go. Oh, yeah. Hey, yep. Lena, I redeem myself. See, there we go. You did. <laughs> I knew you would. I Fucking had fast, Eddie. Amazing. <laughs> and fast, Eddie never came back either. Mm. Nope. No. All right, Chris. What's your next? Pick? All right, real, real quick. Uh, summer of 1992. I was uh, doing college radio. And uh, I, had, I had a show and uh, I went to the station one day and uh, the program director was like, dude, you got to hear this, uh, this soundtrack album. This one track is awesome. And I'm like, OK. And he played it for me. And I'm like, holy shit, because it was this like uh, this uh, new solo artist. And he was a new solo artist because he used to be in a really big band. Uh, but nobody knew at the time that he was backed by another band that was fairly big at the time was just about to explode and I, I know some of the guys on the panel don't like it uh but this is this is that rare promo single and it's uh rob halford with light comes out of black oh. from the buffy the vampire slayer uh soundtrack album uh but it's rob halford backed by the four members of pantera and it's a wow. fantastic track wow um and um uh, that's really good I, I i like it yeah no i'm with you i love it very cool. Sydney, we got a quick question for you before we go to uh, Ryan. Uh, your favorite Scorpions album with Matthias Jabs on guitar? Um, it's going to have to be Animal Magnetism. Um, I love Make It Real is probably my favorite Scorpion song. And it's really hard because at first I wanted to say Blackout um, or, you know, of course, I, you know, such a fantastic record but for me it definitely has to be animal magnetism because j even for make it real alone but the zoo and just oh falling in love it's so good so that's going to be my my pick wow surprise awesome hey chris we have a request for us to do backwoods horror episode on the monster's den oh just okay for, that's that's good that for, we that for sure okay Absolutely. All right, Ryan, back to you. All right, so I just thought of this one like 15 minutes before we did the show. I was trying to think of a wild pick, a little something that nobody else would pick, and I got one. I pulled it off myself. So this is a uh, this is Slayer uh, doing a duet with uh, Mr. Ice T from Body Count and Law and Order Special Victims Unit. <laughs> that is on the uh, soundtrack to a great movie with Dennis Leary and Millie Westovetz called Judgment Night. Yeah, Judgment Night. And uh, the soundtrack, it's all collaborations between rock bands and hip-hop acts. So uh, they did, like, Biohazard with Onyx, Onyx. Helmet, and House of Pain. And it, this soundtrack, it's, it's, you know, it's a very, it's a very 90s artifact. But uh, they actually, uh, Slayer and Ice-T cover three songs by the punk band The Exploited. And it's kind of like a little medley to do a mashup. And it's fucking great. Ice-T sounds great on it. Slayer sounds great. I was trying to figure out what year this came out. It was, like, the early 90s, like, 93, 94. So probably around yep. uh, the time of divine intervention, like somewhere in that era. But uh, yeah, really cool. So the song's called Disorder, even though it's an exploited uh, medley. And I love the exploited. One of the few like old hardcore bands I'm really into. So uh, yep, I'm going with Slayer and Ice-T from uh, the Judgment Night soundtrack. And uh, yep. 1993. Good one. 
Yeah. All the bunch of those when that came out. It's all the bunch of those when that came out. Yeah, good shit. Good movie, good stuff. Uh, my favorite Dennis Leary movie right there. Love it. Oh, yeah. Wow, oh, really? Yeah, he's great as the villain. Fucking awesome as the villain in that. I used to sharpen his skates all the time. <laughs> really? <laughs> I worked, at a, I worked at a hockey store in Brookfield, Connecticut. He became a, a good buddy and, and a regular customer. He, I, I was always late to work because, you know, I didn't feel like getting up early to drive all the way to Connecticut. And he was an early bird because he lived not that far from the store and uh, going into the city. So he would leave his skates for me and just, yeah, I have to shark my skates. And no shit. Go down, yeah. So I, I've been to his, I, I got to play hockey with him at his house. So he's a, he's a great guy. Oh, Dennis is a great okay. guy. That's fucking amazing. Yep. Cool. Big Bruins fan, right? Yeah. Oh. And he's <laughs> a big Bruin fan like I'm an Oilers and Ranger fan. Yeah, 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 yeah. We had a lot of a lot of bouts. <laughs> That's cool. That is awesome. Uh, quick uh, answer to a couple questions here for me. Uh, what is my biggest pet peeve in music? I'd have to say when rock bands use harmonica. I am not a harmonica fan. Oh. I hear, I hear harmonica. And Black Sabbath. I have to say. Including the Wizard? Wizard. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll give that him one. that. There's, there's a few that I don't mind, but man, for the most part, I hear harmonica and I, I, you know, I don't mind like blues, you know, blues acts doing it, but when rock bands do it, you know, or heavy bands do it, ugh, no, no thanks, not really interested. So, back to Sydney. Um, so my second pick, and it's really funny because uh, I'm probably thinking that a lot of people are expecting me to say uh, Ozzy being featured on on Hey Stupid, but not i'm not and we may get to allison a little bit but i'm gonna go with this pick um, i'm gonna do ozzy on black label society stillborn and i did a, a little mm -hmm. episode with pete not too long ago ranking the um the black label society albums and uh or songs and um stillborn is my favorite one so you know i i had a conversation too with my dad about this and it's it makes me wonder if stillborn was a song that zach and ozzy originally wrote together for like an ozzy album or something because i feel like it could have been an ozzy song on some of those later records so um i, I love that ozzy you can hear him so clearly and i feel like ozzy probably just had such the vocal chops for that too you know aside from of course zach so i'm gonna go with uh stillborn um and ozzy osborne so yeah. great choice that's on my honorable mentions yeah, it's a good love, one. Uh, that song. Love me some Zach. <laughs> and Lynn, while we still have you, um, I'm sorry, no, Sydney. I mean, sorry. Um, okay, a couple question, quick questions for you here: your favorite Ozzy album and your three favorite Alice Cooper albums. Uh, my favorite Ozzy album. It's really hard because I feel like Blizzard of Oz always has my heart because Randy and I don't know. Um, but I really love, believe it or not, the Ultimate Sin. Shot in the Dark is my favorite Ozzy song ever <sighs> since I was very little. You know what, Butch? Stop. You're lucky it's the one that I know that song at all. Yep. So Shot in the Dark is my favorite. Yeah, I um, love that album. I love that album. I just don't like that. Killer song. of Giants. Yes. Killer Giants. Loser, there's, loser. A ton of, there's a ton of great songs on that record. record. But, yeah. but The Shot in the Dark is a very nostalgic feel for me because I've loved that song since I was very, very young. Um, yeah. so that's probably tied between, I mean, Dire of a Mad Band. It's really hard for me to pick just one, but it's definitely one of those, those uh, earlier records. Um, and Alice Cooper albums, my number one is From the Inside, of course. Um, he wrote that with Bernie Taupin. Uh, if you've never heard that record, literally turn this off when this is over and go listen to that album because it's perfect. Um, second one, I'd probably say Welcome to My Nightmare. This is really hard because I'm doing this on the spot right now. It changes every day, but Welcome to My Nightmare is uh, another one of those albums that was really spe special to me when I was getting into Alice. Um, and it just you know has so many great songs. And then I'd probably go with... Uh, <clears throat> Billion Dollar Babies is my number three because I have to have an original. That original band is my favorite. Um, you know, it's kind of where my heart is with Alice. Um, so I have to go with Billion Dollar Babies, no more Mr. Nice Guy. Uh, you know, can't beat it. Generation Landslide, so good. Um, there's a ton. So that was kind of off the top of my head. It might be different tomorrow, but from the inside is always number one. So <laughs> nice. Nick uh, from Tyler, how many times have you seen Iron Maiden live? <laughs> Oh, so uh, at this point, it's I know it's probably around 16 or 17. I can't I, I get a little hazy. Big, but, uh, yeah, first, 
Is we it figured 18? out it's 18. Oh, we did, right? Yeah, I, th I think 18 yeah. times I've seen him. Once you in saw Germany. him one more time than me. So I was like 17, you were 18. Yeah, because like you, I saw them with freaking Blaze Bailey for the first time. And then when Bruce came back, I saw every tour except for the Queensryche Halford one. I don't know why I wasn't, I didn't, that was like the, yeah. the, the lowest tide of my having money in my life. I was just, you know, and if I made up for it, I saw them at Bakken in 2008. I believe it was the biggest crowd they ever played to in Germany. I was there. Um, of course you were. Of course I was. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> where else would you be? I know. I was drinking like a giant beer. No. And, uh, oh, I, crazy, right? And, uh, yeah. Beer? So I think I, I've seen them three times on the past two tours each. So that boosted it up. So yeah, I think we're about 18 times I've seen Iron Maiden. Nice. That sounds about right. What's, what's sad is that I, I know when Nick came into Maiden when he's when he first started seeing him, and, yeah, and he's seen him more than I've seen him, but right. I've seen Iron Maiden since 1982. Yeah, I know. <laughs> somehow, somehow he's still numbers, man. Those I know. Numbers, you think I don't know he that? He sees him 18 <laughs> times on one tour. <laughs> because you stopped yeah. paying for concerts. As you got oh. No, that's not it. I, I gave up on Maiden after a certain point. That, but that's. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, who who here on this call has seen Maiden the most? Chris Salo, how many times? I think like forty-seven times. Forty-eight. Ooh, times. Chris Salo. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh, Chris has like, got me beat. I've you? seen him a bunch too. I mean, I oh, I see him like Nick still does, and I saw him when Butch was around. When Butch went to see him too, but uh, I don't have forty-seven. I don't believe now. Wait, Wait a minute, though. You're not joking. Wait a minute. No. How many times have you guys seen Iron Maiden while wearing? An Iron Maiden cape. Never. That you got I, I know you have. About Butch ten had times. A, Butch, had a, ten Butch had a Patrick Sharp cape on. <laughs> Rephrase the question. <laughs> That's amazing, uh, uh, Chris. That's amazing. You can, between you, everybody you, on the panel, we've seen Maiden over a hundred times, like between everybody yeah. here. Yeah, I, 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 uh, I believe you my, can't go uh, to a concert with Butch and wear the concert T-shirt of the band you're going to see. <clears throat> I remember you made me change my Jesus Priest shirt. Yeah, I won't. Um, no, like, no, yeah, I'll go to no. Kiss Made in their Grateful Dead shows then. Made in only Made in shirts. And everybody's got a different shirt on because they got that. No, he won't allow same it. Same thing as Kiss, same thing as a dead. Oh, and, you can't, and you can't listen to the band that you're going to see that On day. the way there. But not I Iron Maiden. That's all you listen to is Iron Maiden on the way down. In fact, uh, why would you want to listen to the band? Where would you Butch, want to hear the same song? No, Butch that's is stupid. wrong on this one. That's no, stupid. we're not allowed. You can't go with them then. Everyone no. comment, comment about that, because I think that that's the most ridiculous thing ever. You're going to go see the band, and you know the songs, so you're going to listen to the songs on the way all day long and on the way there, and listen to the band play the songs, and then listen to the songs on the way home. No, well, you're chirping. It depends on what you're, you're chirping, listening to, though. Know, you, you can listen, like, perfect example. So Steve and I <laughs> and, and Ryan, like, I don't know, 10 years ago, whatever the hell it was, we went to see Black Sabbath in Jersey. And we were flabbergasted. There were people cranking War Pigs and Iron Man and Paranoid, like, like before the show. And we're like, you can't play, like, Eternal Idol or, like, you no, know. they're not going to play that. Ecstasy or something. I'm like. Right. Yeah, okay. The universe, like even like that, you know. That yeah. that I give you. If you play the stuff that you know that they're not going to play. Yeah. Right. If they're not going to play it That's live. Cool. Yeah. But yeah, playing I the hits, that made you're going to want you to hear the hits. Yeah. 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 I've done Real that quick because it's been asked a couple times. Uh, Steve and Allo, your favorite Black Sabbath album, both of you. Mob Rules. Favorite Black Sabbath album? Boy, that's not an, never episode, that's an episode of my channel Wednesday. <laughs> I don't know if I can disclose that information now without a written mm. contract. Uh, I'm still working on that. I could be. I could change any day, sort of like Sydney was talking about some of her bands. Uh, I'm going to go one. with Black Sabbath Sabotage. Sabotage? Yeah. yeah. Very cool. Good, Good choice. Very cool. All right, where did I leave off? Uh, Sydney, you went, right? Did you go? Yeah. Yes. You did. So, geez, Butch, right? I think so. I don't know. Butch, then Steve. Yeah, the whole the order got mixed. All right, okay. Butch is next, then Steve. All right, Butch, what do you got? So I didn't, I honestly did not do this on purpose. I kind of realized it after the fact, after I put the shirt on. And so it just happened to work out that way. But um, I have to stand up a little bit if you can see my shirt, because people always comment about my shirt. So there's one of my favorite guitar players on the planet, John Norm. And uh, so my number two pick is, I knew, I knew, I knew Pete would like this one. Oh, did you really? 
<laughs> Damn you. Yeah, I'm sorry. That. So <laughs> that, that, definitely gotta have backup choices. I, I thankfully I do. Yeah. Well, you know, you know Pete does. So my boy, my boy Johnny Norum um, had Glenn Hughes, who everyone that, that watches the channel kind of gets the feeling that I love him a little bit. So Glenn Hughes sings on Face the Truth from 1992. And honestly, I remember where I physically got this CD. I was working for Z-Rock at the time, radio station, and they had sent this to, to me. And I'm looking at this. And so just to be consistent with my John Sykes every week, if anybody out there that's a John Sykes fan, there was a poster of John Sykes in like 1989 after the first Blue Murder record came out where he's sit, holding his, his baby, his guitar, and this exact same pose. And I, I giggled when I saw this. I'm like, fuck, look at that. John Norm doing the same exact pose as, as John Sykes. So I went into it with that, even though I loved him. I was like, oh, this is going to be interesting. And then I didn't know. I didn't look inside and see that Glenn Hughes was on it. And then you hear him, you're like, oh, shit. Um, but on top of that, one of the reasons I love John Norm so much, besides that he's a great guitar player and he's one of my, my building block guitar players, um, back in this era of his solo stuff, which was early on, he always did a Thin Lizzy cover and he does a phenomenal version of Opium Trail from Bad Reputation on this and he actually sings on it. So Glenn Hughes does not sing on that. Norm does. And a little pet peeve is Norm sings the words wrong, which kind of irked me. You love the band so much, you're doing a cover. How do you sing the words wrong? But it doesn't matter, it's John Norm. So John Norm. it's a great cover, it's a great album. Yeah. One of Glenn Hughes's best vocal performances ever. Glenn, you haven't heard just, it. Uh, yeah. yep. Check it out. Just we have a question for Lynn. Lynn, what is your opinion of death metal? <laughs> love it. No, I do. I like it. I don't have I'm not, nothing against death metal. Bullshit. Oh, my God. Don't listen to Butch because Butch was Damn a poser true, back man. in the day and Butch didn't like any death metal. So really? me and my best friend Lisa would go to all the death metal shows all the time. Us Name three girls. Name, and we were the band. only three girls back in the day. I don't care. Yeah. Exodus and Apom Death. We saw them all. That to me was death metal, metal back in the day. Oh, stop, Steve. Jesus. Leave her alone. I'm just saying, like, I saw all those Monster. bands back in the day. I like it. I'll get in the mosh pit. Well, now I probably won't because I'm old and decrepit. No, and I have necrotic gallbladder. But either no. way, I and like I wasn't there. Mosh pit. Don't listen to Butch. Butch was never with me when I saw death metal. Butch doesn't like death metal. I'll be the exactly. first person to say it. I like so Swedish death no metal. Point down. Wait a minute. Swedish death metal is a completely different story. I'm all about that. Only but because other you like that. the chicks from Sweden, that's why. Butch just no. referred to himself in the third person. I just want to point that out. Because he's a George Costanza fan. Butch is getting, Butch is getting angry. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, I do like death metal, actually. So if you have some good ones, I probably haven't heard them all. Send them on to me. No problem. Necrotic gallbladder. That's yeah, the necrotic gallbladder. That's my new band, necrotic gallbladder. Immolation. <laughs> so underground. Thank you. It's the winter of Butch. Uh, uh, too funny. Uh, Butch, a couple people want to know, uh, you and I, do we prefer Gibson or Fender guitars? Ooh. I'll answer, well, I prefer Gibson, but I love Fenders too, so. Well, yeah, if, if, if it's just Fender and Gibson, probably Gibson, but I have a bunch of super strats because of the Van Halen influence of a, as a kid, you know, with humbuckers and everything, Floyd Roses. So that way I kind of would go towards the, the Fender, but it's not really a Fender. So I would say Gibson and John Sykes with that Les Paul. And yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean, I'm a Les Paul guy, but it took me a couple strats and tellies to get one that I, of each that I really liked. Yeah. Um, but with the Gibsons, man, once you, once you have a Les Paul in your hand, that's kind of, kind of the dream guitar right there so all right uh mr keeler hey, hey i'm back exodus hey. is not a death metal band they're thrash metal and i don't want to pick on you because you just came and just Whatever. came back and I love you, i'll do it death metal i don't care Give it to me. I'll, I'll take it exodus because exodus is thrash metal so we just cleared that up and i know our viewers like when we quibble a little bit so uh but my number two we're, we're going to 2016 <laughs> We're going to 2016 for my number two pick tonight. I'm gonna kill I... you. Huh? Go ahead. 
I'm going to kill well, you. Well, you know what? Thing. If we both pick the same thing, the show will get over quicker. So we can both talk about the same one now. <laughs> I'm just joking. So number two is from 2016. And I'm sure me and Nick are going to have the same pick because we both like a lot of the same stuff. I'm going with Evergrey for 2016 oh. with Flory no. Johnson, uh, a song called In Orbit. No, no, never heard of it. Okay. Wow, you've never heard that song? No, I've heard of, I'm sorry, I've heard of Evergrey. I just, I've not heard that. I love Flory Johnson. I, I haven't heard that. I bet it's, it's from really the album Storm, with, Storm Within. I'm surprised you didn't get to hear that record. Uh, yeah. Maybe it's not enough underground for you. <laughs> yeah, you can read the logo. He doesn't like it. What can I you read? You can the read the uh, butch, butch. You can read that logo for Tom, for Tom's uh, band. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> no, that's cool. I bet you your shirt. Don't feel bad. That's Bortnagar. I can read I, that one. I haven't figured out what that says yet. It says hello, Butch. <laughs> no, not you, <laughs> Ryan's. 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 Oh, well, Ryan's oh, yeah. gonna figure that's out. a big secret. I'm not telling. I already no said. It. Does it start know. with a Z? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's the only part I can figure out. Zemiel uh, from Greece, from Athens, Greece. That was a good pick, Steve. No, That's Butch would like that one. Butch yeah. would like That's them. A good one. I, I, really I, good I'm a big immigrant. I love Butch everybody. would like them. So Nick's worried about my next pick. I'm, I'm glad I got to go before him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Lynn. Back to you, Lynn. All right. So I know Butch is going to give me crap for this one, but I don't care. <laughs> so, I'm just so waiting really for it. I'm doing it. It's a two for one, really, I'm giving because it's really my favorite guest star because I love him so much. And it's Rob Halford on Lift Me Up in Five Finger Death Punch because when I heard that song and I heard Halford come on, I freaking, <laughs> it made me so energized. I don't care. It's Halford. I love Five Finger Death Punch. I don't care what Butch says. And I also like Halford when he does um, Black Wedding within this moment. So it's a Halford's one of my favorite special guests, though he can sing me the phone book and I wouldn't give a shit. You didn't, didn't pick Rob Halford with baby metal, too. He, he did sing the phone book on hey, that it's one. Halford, right? I mean, it's he, no, honest to God, he can really jump in with anybody and I'll like whatever song it is. Cool. I, yeah. you know, yeah. Even yeah. Bruce Springsteen, and I don't really like Bruce Springsteen, but if Halford sang a song with Bruce Springsteen, I probably would like it. If Halford choked Bruce hey, Springsteen. Halford guesting on Five Finger Death Punch song, probably the best song they ever did. Yeah. Do they even well, know who there he you is? Go. I again, I oh, like my finger. I don't care if any of you do. I'm going to stick to my guns because it's my pick, and it's what stick I to your do. guns. I gave him an honorary your guns. Your guns. Guns. We all have different don't opinions. Let, don't let the elitists get you down like like me. I'm not gonna. And you know what? He said like Evergrey, me. and I thought he was talking about Evergreen, which is the I favorite town in my Hallmark movie. That's a type I of thing. Well, I think you should listen to Evergrey instead of watching the Evergrey. Honestly, I, I'll tell you right now, Lynn, you would love Evergrey. You yeah. Would. yeah sure would. Would. I, I'll tell you right now, that, good band. that might be my number one album of the year, of this year, and it comes out in two weeks. That okay, can phenomenal. someone send it to me then, please? I, I have sent you a couple Evergrey things a couple a few weeks ago. You must not have a lot to listen to them. Well, I was probably in the hospital. Yes, she was in the hospital. No, it was before then. Oh, Steve, Jesus <laughs> Christ. And Lynn, you would like yeah, Evergrey. Right. Tom's vocals are amazing. You would like, she would like it. Yeah, that is Great. a good band. They are. Is he hot? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, you're not. She's not kidding. She means that very, I mean, very, he's very, not very She's not kidding. Uh, all right, Should Nick, I have a question for you from James yeah. Solidary, who's asked it probably about 10 times, so I got to ask you. Yeah. Uh, you like the stoner rock band Egypt? Me? Yes. No, I have not heard them. Should I hear them? I, I, I don't know who they are either. Yeah. I'll, I'll check them out. I think you're telling I'll you to listen to them, Nick. I think you're being a. What's that? I said, I think you're kind of suggesting you listen to them. He's asked that many times. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Egypt? Yeah, no, I, I'll check it out. I haven't heard of yeah. them. No. And your next pick. All right. So I'm going uh, right to what Lynn was touching on before death metal. I have to pick this one. I was thinking about it and. At the time of my life, I thought it was the coolest thing in the world because I was just getting into this world of, of American death metal back in the very early 90s. So the album that I'm talking about is Napalm Death. OK, it's the Harmony Corruption album. Great and, album. Yeah, right. Oh, one of my favorite Napalm Death albums, without a doubt. <laughs> uh, Earache, early, early 90s. There was a groove to it. It was, it was really fucking good. That's my and, music right there. Oh, my God. Yeah. And there's a song on it called Unfit Earth. Um, 
And the cool thing about that was that you had, uh, you had not only, you know, Barney on vocals, you had uh, Glenn Benton from Deicide and John Tardy from Obituary also, you know, sing on this song. And obviously they're, they're, they're screaming and, you know, you know, but um, they were, those three guys were probably along with David Vincent from Morbid Angel were for me, like what death metal meant in the early nineties. And mm. to have uh, two, uh, you know, two of those guys appear on a Napalm death album, even just the one song um, was just cool and kind of unexpected. And uh, if you're into, you know, early nineties death metal, uh, that was, um, and it's an excellent song. It's got, it's a really neck snapping kind of like mosh pit inducing song. And uh Man, to hear my two of my favorite death metal vocalists sing with Barney uh, on it was pretty badass. And then what's funny about it is that Obituary, you know, all their songs were about decay and death and pollution and horror and all that shit. And Glenn Benton, you know, everything DSI does is like Satan, Satan, Satan. But the song is like this environmentally conscious song that's like basically a song about stop, you know, fucking everything up out there. And, uh, and polluting the earth and all that crap. So I thought that was kind of funny because you wouldn't expect that. Um, but, you know, Napalm Death always had that, that, that sort of social consciousness going on. So um, I don't know who out there would, uh, you know, younger guys might not, might not know that they even did that. But uh, there are three guys that are still going strong today. And um, this was one of maybe the only time they were all together on a recording. So. The song is Unfit Earth from Harmony Corruption album, Napalm Death, early 90s. Ooh. Good yeah. album. I just love nice. that there's somebody in death metal named Barney. It's yeah. Not his real name. It's a nickname. His name, uh, Mark. his name is Mark, but for some reason they call him Barney. I, I, because he was a goofball. They always called him a Barney because he was a goofball back then. I mean, he's a goofball now because I saw him bust his ass in Montreal. He is at, a goofball. Uh, he was in the middle of screaming and he just slipped on some water, just fell right on his back and got right back up and didn't miss a beat. And he's he not is. a young man either. So uh, very cool. Nice guy. I was going to say, am, am I the only one that always thought that bit uh, uh, that Barney from Napalm Death in the 90s looked like the illegitimate son of Biff from Saxon? Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm always, They're both like, anytime yeah. I saw them, I was like, oh, it's there's there's Biff Jr., yeah, like if Biff Byford and Garth from yeah, and like Garth from Wayne's World. Yeah, like Biff and Garth from Wayne's yeah. World together. I mean, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, Barney used to do the 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 Chief J Strongbow walking back and forth. But... He, oh yeah, he's oh, one he, of the he, most unique frontmen. Oh yeah. In metal. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 His stage antics are. Oh, he's uh, he's great up there. Yeah. And yeah. Napalm Death to this day has so much energy on stage, and it's just so good at what they yeah. do. Um, oh, so much more than just grind. Yeah, we got yeah, a quick so. question each for Chris and then for Ryan. Chris, your favorite UFO album, and Ryan, I'll ask the question now so you can think about it. Your favorite Blue Oyster Cold album? Mm. Wow, one on Origin. Oh, well, that was quick. All right, Chris. Yeah, I, I was going to say, I, I guess I'm going to have to go with Strangers in the Night if I have to pick pick a you know pick a UFO record. Cool. Sounds good. All right. Uh, my, uh, I guess it's my two. Yeah. All right. So uh, I have to throw this out there because if I don't, Butch is going to do it. I have a feeling. So uh, I'm going to go with Greg Lake with Mr. Gary Moore on guitar. A little wow. nuclear attack and a bunch of other cool Woo. things. I mean, uh, Greg Lake was never heavier and um, Gary is just absolutely shredding balls on this, man. I just, uh, oh, we miss it. Balls. I like that phrase. <laughs> oh, yeah, I had to pick Who does it? Great live album, great live album. So that's that's my pick. And uh, back to Chris. Wait, hold hold on a sec. Hold on, hold on. Hi, man. You can't. You can't. I'm sorry. Hang on a second, Chris. He just threw Gary words. Just moving on. Gary destroys on that fucking record. Right, he does. He shreds balls. Oh, he shreds balls. Yes. God great damn. Great. Happy balls, Daddy. And, and, it's, and it's funny because most people don't even understand or realize that he was even with Greg like in the band and did a tour. Yeah. And it's a King Biscuit Flower Hour thing. Gary destroys on that. Nobody yeah. knows what that is but us. Dreads balls. <laughs> no, there's a million people watching us that know the King Biscuit that, Flower Hour. Yeah. I think there's some people our age. Uh, we have yeah. almost we have almost 700 people watching this, guys. Oh, oh, but, but, but Steve, you That's know what? Bad. King Biscuit oh, it, pick my nose. is a long time ago. Don't pick uh, your nose. Definitely 70s, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 70s, early 80s, yeah, yeah. 
A Gary Moore, yeah. Anybody that's a Gary Moore fan, and God knows I am. Anyone that's a Gary Moore fan, if you don't have that, if you've never heard at least that that Greg Lake live album, amazing. <laughs> you've never heard Emerson Lake and Palmer play <laughs> with Gary Moore playing on it. <laughs> and and we did just it was just the anniversary of Gary Moore's death that I wanted to say yeah, too. It was well, about it, ten years since absolutely. we absolutely. I posted all about it yesterday. Yeah, for damn sure. you want to hear Gary doing 21st century schizoid, man. That's a, I mean, that's a thing of beauty right there. Absolutely, I'm yeah, sorry, it's, Chris. it's incredible. It's incredible. Doors. Gary Moore I had to say something. Gary Moore, woohoo! Woo All right, um, no. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do one dishonorable mention, uh, and that's uh, Ice T guesting on Forbidden from from Black Sabbath. <laughs> that song, Illusion of Power. Uh, I hate it. I hate that record. I hate that song. However, the the, the rumor is. That Ice T sang the whole album, and I, even though I hate that record, I would totally be a first day buyer if that bootleg ever comes out of Ice <laughs> T singing that whole record. I'd, I'd be a second guy. I'd be right there with you. I'd be right there in line. Yeah, with you. even though I'm either. sure I'm sure I'd hate it. But anyway, uh, I don't think I'd buy it. <laughs> Just the uh, old guys. I don't want anything to do with that one. I love. I'd, I'd buy it from RockFantasy.com. Uh, but all right, my, my final pick. A uh, couple a uh, couple weeks ago, me and Pete. Did the uh, the ranking of all the uh, Epica records, and if I'm not mistaken, Pete, me and you were the only ones that ever, on all your years, me and Pete picked picked all the same albums in order, which was pretty crazy. Uh, <laughs> every one of them. Yep, every single That's one. Cool. Me and Pete's uh, favorite Epica record uh, was uh, the Divine Conspiracy. There's a track on there called uh, Sancta Terra, but when Epica did this uh, live uh, Blu-ray and DVD. They had uh, Simone do the vocals along with uh, uh, with Floor from Nightwish, but I think this was actually before she was in Nightwish. I guess it was maybe it was before it was after After Forever, but maybe it was before Nightwish. But anyway, uh, it's a great track. Uh, the video is on like YouTube. I think their two voices uh, work awesome, and uh, that's that's my pick. That's my number three or number one, however we're we're counting. Cool. I have a, uh, a question for Steve, Nick, and Ryan. Your favorite dissection album? Storm of the Lights I Bane. I was going to say, is there, is there, I mean, is there anything other than Storm of the Lights Bane? I mean, another oh, Somberland. Somberland. Somberland is really good. But yeah, I have to say the Storm of the Lights Bane. I, um, I walked into a record shop in, in the mid-90s, and I mean, it sounds weird, but I, I dreamt about the cover before I even saw it, before I even knew what oh, they were. Weird. I just had this weird, like, deja vu oh, when I weird. saw the cover. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm weird. Trippy and, um, yeah, and that was, like, my introduction to Black Metal. That fucking thing, Storm of the Lights, Bane. Amazing. Amazing. The first song on that album, Night's Blood, is, like, one of the top ten Black Metal songs ever for me. It's insane. Perfect. Perfect. So right. good. I can listen to that all day. So the timing changes. Uh, the last album, the Ring Chaos. Crap. I don't like that one. But the yeah, first me neither. Really good. Me neither. Same. So yeah. we couldn't have a week go by without a John Sykes question. Butch, uh, <laughs> your opinion on the news that came out that John had auditioned for Guns N' Roses. I had heard that back in the day, but it, I never got the details, but I just heard that he had done it. Um, must have been bored and there must have been a good payday <laughs> um I, I i can't even imagine him being in guns I mean, can you can you see that <laughs> him and axel up front I, yeah but you know what from the don't hate i'm not hating at all it, it would it would have been cool but i'm glad he didn't do it i'm glad he didn't get it and i'm glad he didn't do it because that would have been well he, he let's put it this way i i Sykes told me a story in 1989 that uh, when he got the White Snake gig, that he had been offered the gig when he was in Thin Lizzy, and he turned it down and talked to Phil Lina, and, and you know they went back and forth about it and everything, and then he they came back around and they offered him again. It's like you know how much how much would you want to be in White Snake, and he told them a million dollars. And he literally told me, I swear on my mom, he literally told me, I said a million dollars, not even thinking remotely that I would, that they would say, okay, I just threw it out there just kind of to make him go away. And they came back and said, okay. And that's when he joined White Snake in 84. So if he got a million dollars from White Snake in 84 and they weren't even the huge yet, 
I can imagine what the payday must, have, you know, could have been in, in Guns N' Roses. But yeah, I'm, I'm glad he didn't get it. That would have been a, a complete circus thing. But if he had done that, at least Chris wouldn't have been able to pick on him and talk about him on a milk carton. Well, I was going to say it only took Guns N' Roses, what, like 10 years to do, to do that uh, Chinese democracy <laughs> record? It probably would have taken them at least 15 if John, John Sykes was uh, there. Oh, it would have been a perfect band. Oh, or, man. But he would have been, been the perfect killing. project. He would have killed on it, though. <laughs> Before we get to Ryan, Sydney, your first concert you ever saw. Uh, my very first concert was when I was five years old. I saw Green Day on the American Idiot Tour at Giant Stadium. Um, and that was just a product of the times. It was a product of the times. No, not you. I'm, I'm wondering why Lynn is clapping. Oh. <laughs> Shut up. Don't love yeah, that, that was my first concert. I was five years old. And then I went on to go see, I think my next concert was Ozzy at Madison Square Garden when I was like six or seven. And it's just been a slow incline. So. <laughs> Very cool. Take me down. Uh, I do want to give props to both Sydney and Butch for having rainbow albums uh, nicely placed behind them. Very cool. Gate Look at that. Gatefold. Gatefold Rainbow Rising, which isn't was kind of rare, I guess. Come on, Sydney. Let's see that Gatefold. There we go. Look at that. Yeah. All right. Very nice. nice. Classic lineup. Absolutely. Great album. All right, Mr. You know Scow. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. Let me just say this. Oh, oh. You know, on, on stage, is on stage. Do they do um, Stargazer on that? I always forget. They don't. Nope. They, they don't. don't. Okay, yeah. it's another record. It was another record. I think Pete, that you sent me the review <laughs> years ago, and I was so upset that they do Stargazer and Cozy does not do the intro. And I think yeah, that's yeah, that my review. I was so pissed off. <laughs> I don't even want to hear it now. I don't even, I'm yeah. going to forget you said that. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Real quick, a question for everybody just with a raise of hands. Who on this call, on this video Zoom thing, hates Pearl Jam? Raise your hand. Yeah, I'm not really. I'm not I don't really hate them. Really I, like, I mean, hate's a really strong, hate hate strong hate word. Hate them? I'll dislike I don't them. Really strong word. I don't hate them. Yeah, I, don't I don't know, know if I hate them. I hate them. Actually, when the first album came out, it was okay. So. I like Pearl Jam. I like the music video for oh, the song right. Duda Evolution, the animated video. The video is really cool. I don't yeah. like the song. That's all I can say. Yeah, they're okay. I love the song. Yeah, okay. yeah, love right. song. Right. That's pretty good, Steve. Ryan, you're next yeah, uh, Steve is singing. Hold on, hold yeah, on. Steve's Stop pretty it. good. He's singing. Why don't we go on karaoke <laughs> night? On uh, no, live now you sound like through. Butch when he sings Volbeat for me. Volbeat. Yes, I happen to like Michael Polson, and I love Volbeat. So Butch sings it for me, and he sounds just like that. But no, oh, but, you, but wait, wait a minute. Explain to them the the two people that I say that he sounds like. No, no, the one person, one person. I forgot. You did not forget. The guy from Volbeat sounds like the Swedish chef from the Muppets. <laughs> that's that's not a he not does a not. I take it back. No, that's what nice it was. Guy. I remember now. I'm sorry. That's what it was. Is the is the Swedish chef. And Glenn Danzig, that's who he sounds like. Yeah. Not really a bad thing. Hoody, 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 hoody. Oh, yeah. I can't, that's one band I just can't get into. I know that. Sorry, I love, love them. them. I, I love them. I love me some Michael Polson. Sorry. Like yeah. yodeling. Michael Bolton. Michael Polson. Michael oh, Bolton does a thing for Bolton. Michael Bolton, I celebrate his entire catalog. Stop <laughs> it. Oh, you can call me Mike. Sorry. <laughs> Well, didn't uh, Michael Bolton open for Ozzy when he came out with that album Fool's Game, uh, if I'm not mistaken? <laughs> when when Michael Bolton was trying to do the rocker and, thing, he had that off. album Fool's Game, and I could have swore that he opened for Ozzy when Ozzy was out on, I guess, probably Bark at the Moon. Somebody, somebody looked that up. Damn it. Michael Damn Bolton was in the Let's go to the videotape. Yeah. Michael Bolton Nick was Frank, in the middle, oh, Mr. Google, get to work there, Nick. Oh, Nick, I'm sorry. My, my daughter's trying to make us off. That's Cause... a big metal release out now, I think. Like, yeah. Because we... Chris, that would have been 84. And I know Bolton was in a metal band before that. Okay. I mean, maybe it was, maybe it was, but that's what I, I thought I remember. Maybe before that, maybe around really. there. So, Lynn, uh, Kid Johnny C says, Lynn, you and I can go listen to Volbeat anytime. Oh, nice. Awesome. Thank Somebody you. Lynn. Somebody likes Volbeat. That's wonderful. They're like you. <laughs> I saw Volbeat with Hank Sherman from uh, Merciful Fate playing guitar. He Did was, you really? Yeah, that was the opening for Megadeth, I think. And it, yeah, he was in there. It was oh, uh, overseas. Somebody, somebody was sick, I think, in Volbeat. So I remember, yeah. 
Hank Sherman filled in. And I, I think I, it, I think it was Volbeat, Lacuna Coil, Motorhead, and Megadeth. I think was it overseas? Was it those- no, I think that was Mohegan Sun. I want to say really? uh, it was the, um, Connecticut. Yeah, I remember seeing. I saw pictures. I've seen pictures of that. Yeah, I'm 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 pretty sure. Oh, Hank Sherman. Yeah. Hmm. Guess cool. you would have seen Volbeat then, wouldn't you? Oh, boy, I would have saw Hank Sherman. <laughs> All right, uh, where were we? Ryan, your pick. <laughs> All right, I'm surprised no one picked this one. Uh, so I'm going to go an obvious one here. This is kind of like a uh, heavy metal version of uh, Conway Twitty and Loretta Lynn. But uh, it's Ron oh. Alford and his 2000 album, uh, Resurrection. Yay! And it's, it's a duet with Bruce Dickinson. Uh, I don't even like the song. I'll be honest, I don't like the song. But to have the two of them kind of going back and forth in like that, that country duet fashion, the song's called uh, The One You Love to Hate. All right, that's kind of cool. Uh, that's cool. This is the sound. I guess this album's kind of like a lot of '80s Priest uh, albums or the later '80s Priest, where some songs no! are really good, some songs are really not good. So oh! there's some really, I, there's some songs on this album I think absolutely suck, and there's some songs wow. on this album that are really really good. So I'm out. Uh, it's just one of those. I'm out. Which I'm out. left out in years? I'm going. I'm out. Watch. <laughs> I'm out. Sit down, Stiney. Let me know when it's my turn. I'm out. I'm, that's it. I'm out. Well, that's my choice. I'm going with uh, the one you love to hear. It's not. A, it's actually okay. One of the okay songs in the album. It's in the middle. But uh, to hear the two of them kind of go back and forth, they like a duet like that, where they trade, you know, trade choruses, is very cool. So uh, I'm going with Rob Halford, Bruce Dickinson, 2000 Resurrection. And uh, actually, that was the first time. Uh, that's first a time fine I saw choice. Halford was on, they uh, when they opened for when he opened for uh, Iron Maiden, the tour that Nick missed in uh, 2000. I saw them in. Uh, Scranton, Pennsylvania. And it was them. Oh, and I, I, yeah, it was cool. Uh, cool show. And uh, yeah, obviously he played a bunch of free stuff too, but uh, he played a yeah. whole bunch of songs from this album. Played the good songs from that album. And yeah, it was good. It was a good show. Song no. Resurrection. No. Resurrection's a killer tune. Unbelievable. What a made, song. Made yeah. in Hell, Nightfall. So, so like half the album's good. It's like a 50-50. Uh, We're song. only talking about one song. <laughs> Which one? The... Um, you're saying you're comparing us to Conway Tw- Twitty and Loretta Lynn. Now, who's going to be Loretta Lynn out of this couple? Is it Rob oh, Alford no, or is it Bruce? Oh, not touching oh, that. Oh, Does it sound anything that. like? Uh, no, I'm just saying the young, way they go back, back into the go back. Like country duet. Well, 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 I mean, I could be Ozzy and Lena. I could be all different things. things. No, I don't no. Know. <laughs> it's, it's a viewer. It's Steve, that's up to you which one of them sounds like a Loretta Lynn. That's, that's yeah, all yeah, I don't think either one does, but. I I, I I can't even. I, Which is, just meant to start. You want to walk over and check the hockey scores and be back in a couple. I'm checking right here because I'm missing my Oilers and the Rangers. Oh. I love that. Ryan, really? You don't like that? I love that record. Oh, I know. Some songs are really, it's like, uh, it's like Defenders of the Faith to me. The side A, Defenders of the Faith. Oh. One of the best songs Priest ever wrote. Uh. Side B. Eh, not the best priest songs. But it's Defenders like, of the uh, Faith is an awesome album. Yeah, I, I got to disagree with with Ryan as well. I, Ryan, I love. I know you're here to support and I love your, Defenders your of the following. Faith. Listen, if, if it wasn't for like the church. Resurrection album, Halford would not have been back in Priest. I mean, that was the record that did it. That oh no, I I yeah. agree with that. I totally agree with back. that. Yeah, but yeah, I think that's a really strong record. But you know, it's you know, it's nothing wrong with your opinion. Absolutely. No, so. no, no, no. I'm just saying the first couple songs are better than the last couple songs. That's all hey. I'm saying. Brian, some heads are going to roll is a phenomenal Judas Priest song. That's on side B of. Uh, yeah, but it's not as good as the Sentinel, and it's not as good as Jawbreaker. Jawbreaker is my, yeah. I think, my favorite Judas Priest song. The Sentinel really? is fucking amazing. Free Will Burning, yeah. amazing. Wow. Yeah, I can see your point. Jawbreaker. Jawbreaker. All right, Sydney. Uh, before you give your next pick. We got a couple of questions for you. Um, your favorite scene in Almost Famous, and who's the next interview you have coming up on your podcast? Nice. Um, so my favorite scene in Almost Famous, uh, obviously you guys know if you've asked, it's like my favorite movie ever. Um, so the, the very end of the, close to the end of the movie, um, I'm going to just refer to them by their character names. You know, uh, Russell Hammond is sitting at the, the table and they're all backstage and they're in catering and one of the band-aids comes in her name's Sapphire and she's sitting and she's eating um, dinner and she's talking to him about basically what he did to Penny. And uh, if you've seen the movie, you'll understand, which I'm sure many of you have. 
Uh, but he's, she sees all these new groupies who come in and she goes, um, the, my favorite line from the entire film, she goes, um, you don't even know what it means to be a fan. They don't even know what it means to be a fan to love some silly little piece of music or some band so much that it hurts. And that's how I feel about music is I love music so much that it literally hurts. <laughs> um, yes. And I feel like I love that movie so much because that entire movie and Cameron Crowe talks about this is it really is a love letter to music. And that movie really captures what it means to love music. So that's that's my favorite scene because I feel like that line just encapsulates that entire vibe and feeling of that movie and why I love it so much. Um, so that's my favorite scene. I also love when Penny Lane's dancing in the empty auditorium because that also really kind of captures a vibe. But um, what was the second question? It was who's next to my podcast. Um, today I actually had the opportunity to speak with Mark Weiss, uh, who incredible photographer. Um, if you've seen a picture of your favorite band in the 80s, odds are that he took it. Uh, I have some other interviews coming up this week that are really exciting and I'm not going to share with you guys yet because I don't want to give it away. Um, but the next couple of weeks on the podcast are going to be really, really great. Uh, but I did talk with Mark today and he's such a nice guy. We got into a bunch of stories about the book and uh, everything that's been um, happening with him lately. So stay tuned for that too. Weiss guy. Yeah, Mark Weiss guy. Weiss. <laughs> Cool. And what is your pick, uh, your next, your last pick here for the day? So I had to go, I had to go with an Alice song for my, for my number one, but it's no. not, not going to be what people expect. Um, I'm going to go for a song off of one of his most recent records. And some people don't like this album, but personally, it's my favorite uh, Alice new, like new Alice record. Um, it came out in 2000, 2008. It's Along Came a Spider. And I'm going to go with Slash played on the song Vengeance is Mine. And I think it's such a, it's such a great song. Um, and I think Slash brings so much to it. You know, Slash has that kind of bluesy edge to him. Um, and I think that him and Alice work really well together. They haven't done too much. I mean, they, he did some stuff on He's Stupid as well, but he kind of came in and I think Slash really kind of put his edge on it. So I love that song. That's another concept album. I really love Alice's concept records, if you couldn't tell. Um, and I think that, that one is just his best out of his newer records. Um, some honorable mentions I had um, was, of course, Ozzy and Lita Ford, Close My Eyes Forever, because duh, um, I love 80s metal. Um, also, Roy Harper singing on Pink Floyd's Have a Cigar, which is pretty much the uh, catalyst for a lot of resentment in that band, uh, which went on to, you know, have a lot of whatever <laughs> that later on would cause them to break up. Um, I'm surprised uh, Butch hasn't mentioned it yet, but Out in the Fields is is one that is an honorable mention, which who knows, he might mention it, he might not, I don't know. Um, and yeah, those are those are my honorable mentions. Also, I have to uh, mention uh, David Bowie and Queen, obviously under pressure. That felt like a really obvious one, so I didn't want to have it be one of my picks, but David Bowie is like one of my favorite artists of all time. and. Uh, Freddie Mercury, come on. So uh, those are, that's my number one and my honorable mentions. And uh, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Nice. So Butch, before you go next, and I'll have you start here. Uh, we have a question for all the squares here. Real quick, your favorite guitar player of all time. Butch, go. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, Jesus Christ. Um, <clears throat> there's reasons why, but I'll, I'll say John Sykes, because Sykes is my hero. Okay, Chris Allo. Tony Iommi. Richie Blackmore. Steve. Carlos Santana. Sydney. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, there's so many. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Um, Which one do you think of? I, the first one I thought of was Randy Rhodes. There you go. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Brian. Uh, Piggy, I knew it. I Boy, knew God. it. I knew it. You knew it. Piggy, <laughs> love it. Love him. I'm, I'm thinking Piggy the whole time. How is it you had that CD like right, right there to, to show? How is it you had that exactly CD right, right there? I was able to grab it off the shelf. It was right there, my V's and my CD collection. I fucking love Boy Bond and I love Piggy. But uh, you know, you know, I was going to say, yeah, Lynn, favorite guitar player, Michael Shanker. Michael Shanker, cool. Yeah, Nick. <laughs> Such a delay on that one. We were all like, <laughs> "Yeah, um, <laughs> no, why?" Hard pictures one, but uh, Adrian Smith, 
Um, Asa Holopainen from Amorphous and Sharon McComley from uh, Primordial. Listen, they said one. I had to say one. You pick one. You're right. You're right. You're right. Follow Three. the rules, Nick. Jeez. All right, we'll go with Adrian Smith. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Adrian Smith. All right. Very cool. All right. Butch, back to you. Uh, your final pick for today. Thanks, Sydney. Um, well, I'm going to give you my, my honorable mention. So what I was talking about in the beginning when I started was uh, everyone knows that, that Edward Van Halen is, is, uh, is beyond a god to me. Um, but he was Eddie. I have a, I've been saying forever, there's Edward and there's Eddie, two completely different guitar players. So obviously everyone loves the, the Eddie thing on Beat It. That's iconic. But it doesn't mean that much to me because I was into him years before, and that's when the world caught on to him. And eh, that's, the, that's the Eddie thing. That's not the Edward thing. The Edward thing would have shredded up a storm. The the Eddie thing tapped and made all these noises and made everyone like ooh ooh ooh. But it's still iconic. Um, another <laughs> one for me is uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan on Let's Dance with David Bowie. Um, I, I think that that's. Awesome. He does his little things. He just just the little notes that you hear. You're like, well, that's, that sounds like Stevie. And I think yeah. that, that's badass. And I, I do have to say this just to kind of, again, you have to get him in as much as I can because God knows I love the guy so much. John Sykes did a solo on Derek Sherinian's um, solo record on a song called Gods of War. Mm -hmm. um, I, don't, I don't even remember what year it's from, like maybe 2008 or nine or something. I think it's 2009. Um, Zach Wilde plays the track, the rhythm track, which sounds like Sykes like, for all the pinch harmonics because that's what Sykes is known for too. But Sykes does a really, really, really cool fucking solo in that song. So um, I have to get my boy in there and Sykes means the world to me. So, uh, But for my real pick, Sydney almost ruined it for me. She didn't ruin it for me, but she was close because it's on the same record. Damn, and I wish she ruined it. So it's on. This is the this is the twelve inch single of Out in the Fields from Gary Moore's Run for Cover from 1985. And hey, Pete, who sings on that album? Pete knows. Pete knows that Glenn Hughes sings on that album. Oh Only yeah, twelve yeah. inches. What three songs? Right, three songs on that album. Four songs at, at, at least. I think he sings more than that. But it's not out in the fields. It's the other song that's on this 12 inch single that you probably can't see, or you can kind of see, is the song Military Man. Oh, Military Man's great. Yeah. Military <laughs> Man. I, I mean, I just I just love looking at those two right there. And, and they're both gone, and that means so much to me. God knows. God damn it. But Military Man has the greatest Gary Moore guitar solo of all fucking time. There's two solos on that song, and I'm. <laughs> Everyone knows I get worked up when I'm talking about my favorite guitar players. But goddamn, the second solo, I mean, the first solo is brilliant. The second solo in Military Man, and, and backing up, Phil Lynott sings the song, so that makes it even more grandiose. But the second solo on Military Man makes me cry every single time I hear it. It is so much emotion in that solo. He built Gary just builds it up and just gets into a complete Gary Moore frenzy. Because like I've said forever, there's nobody that had as much fire as Gary Moore did. And that solo, my God, I, I, I defy anybody to listen to that second solo and not get emotional listening to it. He just tears it up. It just builds and builds and builds and builds. And my God. I'm I'm getting misty just talking about it. It's like I, I've I've heard this song so many times, and I have obviously I have the vinyl and the CD. But and re, honestly, what's really funny is this 12 inch single. I've never played it. I I bought this. I don't even know what year. I I probably bought this when it came out, 85 or 86, at a record convention or something. I don't think I've ever opened it completely. It's still sealed. Wow. I don't, yeah, I don't think I, I, I can guarantee you I've never actually played it. I just bought it because it was those two and it was like they were on the cover and on the back of it. Yeah, that Gary Moore just shreds on that fucking song. That, that's that's easily my, my number one. A couple of our viewers think Butch needs a tissue. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. 
<laughs> I, I, I have literally caught myself in the car or sitting here at the computer and a song comes on because I always have my music and shuffle and a song would come on and it's like I, I, I get excited when it comes on and then that first solo plays and then and it slows down and gets misty and then so and the second solo comes I'm like oh shit here it comes I can assure you Butch needs much more than a tissue yeah Tito give me some tissue it's, that would be a good uh, topic. Would be like so we admit songs that made us cry. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, it, it, it's <laughs> that's a good. I, admit it. I I have unabashedly. It <laughs> makes me so happy hearing. That. I mean, literally, that's yeah. my favorite the Gary Moore solo. Solo on Military Man. My God, the Catatonia episode. Yeah, <laughs> Steve Taylor. What's your final you episode? Guys. Uh, we're gonna do songs that make me cry. I don't think I've ever cried over a song. I've, I, I like a lot of songs that are about depression, like Catatonia, but uh, I, I, I get the emotion. But uh, uh, my final one for the evening is from a band that Nick has never heard of them. So Amorphous is the name of the band. Amorphous. Amorphous. No, 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 no. Amorphous. Uh, Good. It's off the Queen of Time album. It is called Amongst the Stars. It, it, it features Tommy with Anak von Giersbergen. Giersbergen. I'm trying to read my own handwriting and I should know, but uh, I doing? love that song. And uh, that song hits me <laughs> on my heartstrings. I didn't cry over it, but I had lost my mom right around when that, that album came out. And I listened to that album all the time. And after she had passed, I was driving to a place we used to go up in that area and I had that song on a stereo and I was kind of talking out to her just saying, mom, I hope you're up there and you're having a good time. But th th that song is all about people passing on into another mm -hmm. life or uh, into the afterlife. So uh, oh, I, would I, say feel that was, I don't even have any honorable mentions tonight. I, feel I didn't that. do any, but uh I, I was too excited watching my Buccaneers win the Super Bowl for the first time in almost 20 years. What's the Super Bowl? It's the uh, it's a championship for National Football League in the United States. Maybe you only watch soccer where you're what, the country you live in. <laughs> you watch a manly sport called hockey. That's right. You eh? watch football too. I don't think the Seahawks made it to the dance this year, but they they were in the playoffs. So hey, Steve, Steve. You got a uh, you have a Man of War album there. You have battle hymns. I do have Man of War. Oh, that's got or, a great guest on it. That's got or Orson so Welles. You can't take mine. Oh, that sorry. Yeah, well, well, he, if you, got the this album is my right shameless there. plug because on the Rock Fantasy Files tomorrow night we are going to be okay. deciphering Man of War's favorite songs when we're going to have Ross the Boss on. So uh, yeah. that'll be taping tomorrow night. So. Oh wow! The, uh, That's cool. my plug, and then we're going to be talking about Killer's 40th anniversary on later in the week, and doing a Black Sabbath Ozzy era episode. So I'm plugging my thing. Sure are. Hey, <laughs> Butch, you always talk about the wonderful butcher shop, and uh, you had that poll last week. I love Never Say Die, but you can't put it up head to head with Long Live Rock and Roll. You just can't do it. <laughs> it's no competition. We've already had Chris. I just want to let you know we've had plenty of people in the chat talking about why don't you guys like Never Say Die? It's it's a great album. It's I terrible. Album. <laughs> I, I, yeah, Johnny Blaze, cool. I mean, listen, it's not just me. The the, the guys in Sabbath hate that record. So yeah, well, they're wrong. Well, you know, everybody likes something different. Depends what you grew up yeah. with. There you go. I used to listen to that album tons on 8-track when it came out. It was a, it's a spacey kind of weird Black Sabbath album. Air yeah. Dance is fucking awesome. Air Dance is like a Genesis. I love it. John love it. McAtee, you're watching us, and you're going to stand up for this. We're going to talk about Never Say Die next this week, and we'll pick on Chris some more because he's going to be on the show with us. <laughs> I like that album. Like, you like I Forbidden like even better than that album, which is I crazy. Do. And I hate the Forbidden record. Forbidden is awful. No, it's still, it's still better than ever. <laughs> hey, before we go on to Lynn, uh, I do want to give a little shout out to um, uh, George Kuhlman, Ko how does he say the name? Koimans from the Dutch band Golden Earring, who's, uh, you know, really sick. I think he's got ALS. Um, so I do uh, 
you know, give some well wishes to a great guitar player. Prayers great up. Band. Cheers yeah, to him. You know. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Prayers up. So, Lynn, you. your final pick of the day. Well, you know. Before I got fucked at the drive-thru by Ryan. <laughs> I was not my, my my final pick was actually a two two-parter was Man of War, it was Battle Hymns, it was Orson Well when he speaks well, in the middle of that tune. Well, Dark well, Avenger, funny. when he speaks, right? It's like kind of Vincent Pricey, and I like Vincent Price, you know? So to me, that was killer. So that was that was my final pick. But there's a two-parter because I like another speaking verse in a song and that's Meatloaf, Paradise by the Dashboard Light. We had a guest speaker and that was Phil Rizzuto. And no I shit. like that. You can hold that. Um, but I like that. You know, I think it kind of made the song, you know, it kind of hyped it up and we were all excited, you know. Wow. Stop right there. You know, I don't know. That does my two. That. Like I said, there were more speaking parts than, than really a guest appearance on a singer or a guitar player, but that's I thought they were pretty cool. Guess, that's a guest spot. That's a, that's a more of a guest spot than a singer. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. anyway, I like those. I like those two. But I do have some honorable mentions. Oh, boy. Um, and of course, Run DMC with Aerosmith, right, when we were young. I thought that was kind of cool. But shut the did F you, up. Did you think it was cool? Yes, I, I did that. do that. I don't care because I like I, the song. I, I like it. Oh, I hated that. Oh. I don't care. Oh, uh, what, this is it's my fun. pick so you guys can yes. shut up. I love how this is every week. It's just Last it, week, I I the <laughs> without fail. I can always yeah. rely on this. <laughs> I know because they're men I, and they just can't keep their mouth shut. I never anyway, my that. other honorable That's mention, stop the Zeet, is Dillinger Escape Plan had a record, a little EP. Irony is a dead scene. Mike Patton from Faith No More sang on it. Love the whole thing. Love cool. Mike Patton. It wasn't when he was doing his like melodic thing. It was a more of a you know, growling, kind of singing, whatever. But I liked it a lot. So that's that. And um, of course, another another tune from the Beatles, which Brian Jones from the Stones plays saxophone. And I think the sax is a really sexy uh, instrument. I love the saxophone. And he plays that on the Beatles. You know my name, look up my number. So I like that for a guest appearance as well. I saw Dillinger with Mike Patton on somewhere in Manhattan. I, I would have loved to see oh. that. It was like 2005, cool. maybe. They was actually supposed to. They were supposed to play with Old Dirty Bastard, and uh, Old Dirty Bastard died, so that did not happen. But uh, oh, that, that was a cool. very random. That would have been a very random yeah. fucking show. But uh, yeah, I did see him with. Uh, that sucks, but I, I thought. But those are my picks, and that's what I like. And I don't care if Butch doesn't like them. Okay, shut up now. No. No. <laughs> Good stuff, Lynn. And I want to thank Lynn for being such a trooper, hanging out for the whole show. Yeah. I'm actually in quite a bit of pain right now, but I'm in a fucking, uh, you know, necrotic gallbladder. I got to suck it up. The band, bro. Wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Isn't the gallbladder gone? There's pain. I'm not even going to yeah, begin to tell you where. Exactly. The gallbladder's I'm not even gone. Begin Shut to up. Tell you where. <laughs> Jesus you Christ. wouldn't understand. The cold bladder's gone. The cold bladder's gone. It's not there. Stop. Oh. Red man. Red Come on. Lynn, let's go slap him, Lynn. Uh. You know what? If I cut his balls and like ripped them out and pulled them up through his throat, Ooh. poured salt on it, maybe That's he would good. understand <laughs> the pain. Like, gone. Shut up. This is awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Gore, see it. Gore, the most gory thing I've ever heard on this program. Yeah, with the death metal. I'm can, sorry. I can get a whole lot gorier, and I can you get a whole lot more You sound like a cannibal corpse song sorry. right now, lady. You're I'm twisted and right gory. Now. I apologize. See, see, people, don't pick on me for, for picking on Lynn. She's way worse to me. Yeah, I oh, think there's that, no that question. was, uh, my ears were like, oh, what the heck is coming out of that? I know. I think this was a family-oriented television program. I'm okay with that. Pull the balls up through, what? Ah. Uh, 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 yeah, you're gonna get some letters from the mail uh, i guess so week. right the youtube I don't like the imagery well then maybe all. they should tell butch to be nice to me and they wouldn't hear me talk like that that's an fcc violation for sure you can't say that the the nick before you we get to your last pick uh yeah. we have a question for you oh uh, what are your thoughts on the black metal band mare cognitum Oh my goodness. My thoughts are I need to look into them more because I've heard of them. There you go. Heard of them. Yeah. On to your final yeah. pick. That's, Does yes. that mean that's something? a good one though. Good one. Um, if I don't know them, that's a good one. Um, okay. Hi. Hello. So. <laughs> hey, Nick. What's up? 
Borknagar. What does that say? It says Borknagar. Yes. And Butch, before we go on, you'd like a lot of their stuff. You yeah, actually yeah. would. You would like them. I agree yeah, with Nick. Not, yeah. The lyric, the, so I'm picking Borknagar. That's why I wore the shirt. Um, on the 2016 album, Winter Thrice, uh, they bring back an old friend, a guy who used to sing for them named Christopher Rigg. Um, his stage name is Garm because these guys all have stage names. Um, he's got a wonderful, clean vocal voice. And he sings on the song, the title track to Winter Thrice. He sings on Winter Thrice. And it has got to be one of the coolest uh, songs. An unbelievable performance by him. Like, just really a lot of feeling. Um, and the lyrics are all about, you know, the winter landscapes of the, of the northern uh, Nordic countries and stuff like that. And, um, man, he really just kicks ass, you know. And I thought maybe he was going to be back in the band, but it was just that death spot on, uh, on Winter Thrice. So I, I know probably – what's that, Ryan? I, I need to hear that because I love his vocals on Over. He's, he's... Yeah, and you'll love it because his vocals are much closer <laughs> to, to that in this than they are to, like, whatever death metal he did. Um, and anyone who loves, like, you know, sort of proggy uh, – kind of weird but 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 well played metal man i can't say enough about borknagar and that performance on winter thrice by christopher rigg is just one for the ages really good and uh i have a couple of uh, honorable mentions if i may um may uh, the 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 black metal band marduk from sweden they do a very unusual song called uh, accuser opposer and they bring in my boy alan averill from primordial and he does this like really robust like singing uh counterpoint to the vocalist of marduk mortus who Wait, sounds that, like do that again do that again mortus no. he uh he does he does a great uh robust like clean vocal counterpoint to uh mortus who sounds like the mouth of hell itself and uh it's a really cool it's a very like like sort of a uh, slow like you know deliberate type song it's not usual like their speedy shit so it really, it's actually very well done. Um, and then, uh, you know, to, on the complete opposite end of the spectrum, I have to give a shout out to uh, the band Nightwish um, on, their, on their album Once. Uh, when they still had Tarya, they did a song called Creek Mary's Blood. And if you remember, they, they brought in a uh, Lakota, Lakota Indian um, singer called John Two Hawks. And his vocal counterpart, counterpoint to Tarya's uh, mezzo-soprano he, he has this like really clear, beautiful voice. And um, it's, you know, it's about the Trail of Tears and it's about uh, one of the worst uh, Native American battle losses, uh, you know, that signified a, a great part of their defeat, their long, slow defeat. And um, it's, you want to talk about emotions. It's, uh, and if you look up, I think it's called End of an Era is the DVD, I, I think where um, Nightwish performs that song in Helsinki at the Globe Arena with John Two Hawks and he's dressed in all the Native American shit and you want to talk about a fucking it's like a soundtrack more than a, a heavy metal song so I would give a shout out to that as, the, as a great one and um, Kai Hansen uh, his quick appearance on Kai Hansen from who started Halloween uh, he does an appearance on Blind Guardians Lost in the Twilight Hall and uh, his voice is like kind of off key in it but like it just works you remember that, Pete, that, that Lost in the Twilight Hall? Yeah, man, that's just such a fucking great. He just sings Counterpoint to Hansi, and uh, it's such great German speed metal. So those are some of my favorites right there. Nice. All right, to close us out here, uh, my last pick is going to be uh, from this wonderful album from Camelot, The Black Halo, Mr. Shagrath from Dimbu Borgir. Nice. sings uh, growling vocals on a couple tunes which uh, kind of a little bit different for this band this symphonic power metal band but uh, he adds that kind of like evilness to one of the characters uh, on this concept album which I think worked out really really well so that's my final pick of the day and then I got a couple honorable mentions here uh, the first one is going to be Mr. Andy Powell, lead guitarist from Wishbone Ash. He played the closing guitar solo on Renaissance's uh, Ashes Are Burning on the song, title track from the album. Really, really cool. Uh, how about Mr. Brian May, who plays a guest guitar solo on When Death Calls on Black Sabbath's Headless Cross album? 
Oh, I didn't know that. And then finally, we've got uh, Simone from Epica, who guests with Primal Fear on the New Religion album on Fighting the Darkness, which is nice. an amazing, uh, powerful, <clears throat> symphonic power metal track. So there you have my final picks. I do have one more question for everybody here. Um, before the pandemic hit, what is the last concert you saw before they shut everything down? Chris Allo. Oh, you got to come back to me. Because I, I just, yeah, I just, uh, uh, Candy Kane posted it the other day and I was like, oh, fuck, yeah, I forgot I went to that show. I, I went there, I took pictures, but I can't remember. Was that the chance? At, at the chance? Yeah. It was Ross like the, the end boss. of January. What, what was it? Ross the Boss. That was in January 2020. All right, maybe that maybe that was it then. I think that was it, Ross the Boss. The Man of War. The Man of War show, yeah. yeah, yeah I think yeah, you were right, there. Was there. I, I was there. I was, away. I was trying to get you yeah, there to come visit, but you wouldn't come in until the, the, two minutes before the, the headline act, he comes in. He never hey. comes to visit for 10 minutes. Hey, man, I'm famous. What do you, what do you want to tell you? Yeah, hey. Steve, you want all this time. Ryan, yeah, your, your last show before the pandemic. I actually got a death metal show in like literally like two days before they shut the planet down. It was uh, it was at St. Vitus, a little bar in Greenpoint, Brooklyn. It was a bunch of obscure bands, uh, Triumvir, Fal, Human Agony, uh, bands nobody's ever heard of. But uh, the timing was amazing because I'm like, man, I'm kind of happy I'm going to this because I feel like this shit's going to get stupid. And then like literally the next day, they're like, oh, everything shut down, no concerts, no indoor dining, mm -hmm. everybody go hide in their basement. The end. So that was it. It was like March 7th, I think, March 7th or March 8th was the uh, day that happened. Wow, well, right, right before. Wow. Sydney, your last show. Like, skin of the teeth. Um, my last show was Jeff T. I saw him at the TLA in Philadelphia. Uh, he was doing Rage for Order and Empire in its entirety. Um, so that was the last one, which is crazy because, yeah, that was the end of February. So I think it was like February 26th or 27th or something. Um, and, yeah, that was – it's insane to think that it's almost been a year. It's like, whoa. I don't know. It's yeah. like, oh my gosh. It calls in on a year. Yeah. Yep. Kind of just went and got in a perspective for a minute of like, holy crap, this has almost been going on for a year. It's freaking insane. Crazy. Yep. Butch, your last show. Oh, I'm glad I went before Lynn because I'm going to ruin it for Lynn. So no, you're not because we were at the same show, Dick. That, that's why I'm going to ruin it because I'm going to I'm going to steal your thunder. So I think that last week of February, I saw three shows. John Five. And then it was Jeff Tate, like Sydney just said, doing the mind crime and what was it? What was it? Rage. 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 Rage for order. Oh, yeah, Rage. 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 Fucking record. And then um, after that was YNT and Zebra. And uh, I, I did not stay for Zebra. YNT, there was an opening act who I don't remember who it was. It might have been a local thing. And then YNT, who were always phenomenal, always professional, always great, saw them. And Zebra is, is a great band. I was never a big fan of them. I don't own any of their stuff. I own a couple, I have a couple of songs in my in my library, but YNT crushed. And then I left after YNT and I did not stay in see Zebra and, and that was it. Hi, Brian. I saw uh, I saw a concert in July. Me and uh, two friends, we drove like five hours the fucking uh, middle of New I'm Hampshire. Sure. <laughs> We saw a blue oyster cult in the middle of a field. Um, oh, you mentioned that before. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There was like a car and then like a parking spot for you to stand in and then a car. So everybody was separated. But I mean, blue oyster cult kicked ass. They played, you know, a normal set. Uh, it was just them, no openers. But it was like, I'm like, you know what? We usually see blue oyster cult like around here. We go every year. They play like locally mm. New York band. We're like, fuck it. We're going to drive like five hours to like bumfuck, you know, New Hampshire see them because it's the only and that was it that was in july and i haven't seen one since so uh, uh you probably cool. see the, the last so now, ever. i feel rave. like yeah i feel like it was it kind of like an apocalyptic Me? way but yeah so Mr. now Felix. since we've gone from picking our last show to butch adding to three shows before so i gotta get that in on butch because he loves to do it with everyone else uh and then brian's gonna ryan's gonna tell you ones that you've seen during the pandemic so i'm gonna do it all too Ross the Boss at the Chance, Kiss and David Lee Roth in Allentown, PA. And the weirdest one was to me, because I had never been to the legendary Apollo Theater to see Opeth and Graveyard. And during the pandemic, I haven't seen any live bands except for seeing a, a Southern Rock cover band at a dirt track in Bridgeport Speedway in South Jersey. And that's the only live music I've seen since this shit hit. 
the, the difference is, as he's trying to call me out, my shows were all the same week. So it wasn't they weren't. Mine were all in the same month. My, I win. <laughs> children, yeah. children, simmer down. All right, good. We'll be quiet now. Oh, boy. Right on. Well, I just want to say it's it's been a year since I went to any concerts, Pete. So that means it's been a year since Steve Keeler has been able to sing to me. So um, it's, it really bums me out because uh, that's part of my concert going experience is having Steve sing half the songs in, in my ear. Don't I am so happy you brought that up, Chris. Again. I've also oh enjoyed that. You know how many people we've had ask for someone to sing? <laughs> Steve, oh, one more time. I'm going to get Steve to a show. Uh, you know, and uh, yeah, that man award, Steve, Steve knew like every word. I'm, and I, I am always amazed. Like, man how award, I remember oh, all yeah. these lyrics. What man of war song do you want to put up the karaoke screen? We'll do it right now. <laughs> oh my only god. Your, only your fast Hail to England, Steve. Hail to England. Hail, hail to England. I'm not even drinking tonight. <laughs> That's a pretty you sound just like Eric Adams. Steve. That's just just a touch under him. I can do dark yeah, tranquility too. Do Eric, Me and Nick will do right a duet. Right. Nick, you want to do that Glenn Denton and uh, Barney one now already? Yeah, but Steve, uh, you're a little nope. you're a little <laughs> yeah, fuck. I'm a who? Nickel to Tomlinson. <sighs> Come on, you. Lynn, Never go mind. for it. Your last well, Butch already, told, Butch already told you. I went to John Five. And I went to, of course, Jeff Tate. Um, actually, I worked the John Five show, so I wasn't really attending. The last one I actually attended was Jeff Tate, because I took the night off to be up front for that. And then I did work uh, Y&T and Zebra, and I had to stay because I was working, but I do like Zebra. And then I went on a business trip a couple weeks later to Atlanta, Georgia, and I did see a really cool jazz band in a little divey bar in Atlanta, Georgia, which was really cool. And that was the last live music I saw. At the speakeasy. At the speakeasy. You have to go to a little red phone booth to get in. It was really, you have to know the password. It was freaking awesome. And she texted me, you got to come to Atlanta. I'm at a speakeasy. This is so cool. I'm like, they have bourbon. <laughs> but it was cool. I, I like like dirty little dive bars with like pretty cool jazz. It was awesome. I do remember. For someone Lynn, who doesn't ever drink, to, I uh, like dive bars. Go figure. <laughs> have you been to New Orleans, Lynn? Not yet, but it's on my bucket list. There's some cool, really cool little places like that in New Orleans. Yeah. It's very Maybe cool we place. should take a trip when the pandemic's over, all of us, on our cool. tour. I'll go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We can eat gumbo. 25, Go check out bands. It's Nick man Franco. Still alive. Which one's My the last show? Was also uh, Jeff Tate doing Rage for Order and Empire. Uh, were you there? The yeah. Yeah, was there? Yes, he was there. Jeff Tate for the square win tonight. Yeah, because it was like right, it was like the last one. Like it was right yeah. before. And I just want to say, Jeff Tate was bingo here. Thing. Yeah. Last show. Can go to a football game. Then why can't I see you? It's we can't hardly really hear Nick. Also, yeah. yeah. Microphone. Microphone just, <laughs> just, <laughs> just went and took a clue. If twenty-two thousand people are going to a football game, why can't I see a band? I agree. Nick, I, I can't agree. hear you. It sounds and like it wasn't the, the, the only thing. Thing. If if twenty-two thousand people can go to a football game. Why can't we see a concert? The only thing about the football game that I do have to well, say is that at least for some of the performances, and I'm pretty sure for the actual event, a lot of them were actually health. I, I, I'm not going to say for sure, but I'm pretty sure they were all healthcare workers that were vaccinated. Eight thousand, eight thousand yeah, people no, were healthcare workers vaccinated, vaccinated at the Super Bowl. But if you, a lot of people don't know because they're not football and they don't follow. The Buffalo Bills had people in the grand in the, in the in the stadium when they played the playoff games in January in New York State. So it's not just a Florida thing. Uh, they they and you know, who knows what's wrong and right? But hey, NHL has. Fans in the stadiums in Florida. Florida Panthers Florida's have got people, everything people inside on. down there. So. Florida, Florida, Florida has everything. You can go Florida. see Jeff Tate just played Florida a few weeks ago. Yep, I'll go down to Florida. I'll go fuck. It just Yo, goes girl. to show you, man. We just everybody's gotta going. I think <laughs> everybody's just got to get past this shit. Like we got to get by it somehow. Listen, what are we doing here? It's, it's there, there are no cases in Canada. Yeah, because they're like. 
I mean, well, I, mean, well, I mean, sport wise, you know, what's going on sports wise? I don't mean there's no cases there, but oh, well, they're shutting sports, down games left and right in the NHL, shutting down in America. Yeah, but it's not in Canada. The Canadian teams haven't had a bubble yet, a, a bump in the road yet. No, if the Oilers won tonight, yay. It's just ridiculous. We'll, we'll see live music in the year 20. Well, I do want to say, from what, I understand, from what I've heard, um, a lot of the uh, like the tour promotional people or whatever. Are, are saying that 2022 is when everything is is that's what they're you know they're saying yeah. so hopefully i sure hope so because i have tickets to ringo star nick but, I, know, I, I, I think it'll be up and run, it'll be full force in 2022 i think that you'll see you'll see some bands out like by september october of this year i think yeah that's maybe what, everyone's ramstein hoping is, for that yeah ramstein is supposed to play uh ramstein is supposed to uh, the tickets they go back on sale for ramstein in september really yeah my friend keeps like haranguing me at work like oh you got we gotta get tickets to ramstein i'm like dude i don't what ramstein i don't think anything's gonna happen but he thinks it is i don't know i i cashed my ramstein tickets back in and then uh Probably like two, three weeks ago, just out of curiosity, I, I looked at the map. There were yeah. thousands of tickets uh, available. Th- thousands of tickets available. So oh, I'm totally going to tickets again. So I know. Yeah. yeah. Psycho Las Vegas is just start, started to sell tickets again for August. I, I have I friends can't, calling I, me up. Are you coming to share a room with me? I was like, I, I can't even leave my house me. now. Am I going to go to a concert? Yeah. I cashed my tickets we'll in for Psycho Las Vegas too. I really want oh, to see Personal Fate Emperor, house. but. Uh, I'm waiting. See, yeah, you're choosing. Wait. You're choosing not to leave your house. You you can leave your house. You know? Who like, can? You, you can. <laughs> I am taking care of a wife that's sick, and I have to be but a no, good person. Now, let me ask you a question: Are you have you been able to work out the vaccine to get it? Like, is that available? Not yet. Not available. That's crazy yet. to me. That's crazy to me. You should. I, you and your wife should be allowed to get the vaccine sooner. It's not because I have a heart condition, and they will. They won't let me get it yet. Yeah, it's really backed up. It's really Makes backed no up. Right sense. Now. So I'm gonna I'm gonna wait a little bit anyhow. I'm okay with staying home for a little while. I'm connecting and you know that's what you gotta do for now. Do so the, the final show that I caught before uh, COVID hit was uh, Sons of Apollo in uh, New Jersey. Well, I think nice. it was last week in February, so it was right before March hit. That's a good one. Uh, Lynn, you were there, right? I yeah, I, I think you. I saw you. Actually, I think I did see you there, didn't I? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, see, so, so was... I forgot one. Yeah, you did. That was the in last your one face, Butch. That's Butch right. Butch here. He went to check the hockey game. <laughs> oh, Butch went to go pee pee. He's drinking too much bourbon. <laughs> uh, there you go. So, uh, so that's it, everybody. So, for all of you watching, thank you for being patient with us for the first like five or eight minutes or so until uh, we figured this whole thing out. But now uh, I've got all the technical stuff down. So when we do these future live shows. Yeah. Uh, they'll be a bit smoother, but uh, right. a lot of people were saying the first five minutes was hilarious was because all- we were all sitting there watching and nobody knows what's going on. I'm hearing all the echo, uh, but we got to figure it out. And uh, I will say uh, we got a ton of questions. We had like almost 700 people watching us today. Tons of really good questions. I only obviously asked a bunch of them to, for you guys, but a lot of really good stuff. So we'll, we'll think of doing a, uh, a future show where it's nothing but that. Uh, I think that'll be a lot of fun. So, uh, so anyway, uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. Of course, we're here on YouTube. All, All the damn time. time. Here we go. Uh, make sure, uh, Steve, quick plug for Rock Fantasy. Rockfantasy.com. Shop. Come to the store in Middletown. Rock Fantasy Files, my YouTube channel. Pete and I did the Led Zeppelin episode last week. I thought that was pretty fun. And we're working on it. Chris is going to be a guest on Wednesday. We're doing a Black Sabbath uh, Ozzy Osbourne era uh, title. We're going to talk about them. And uh, some of my all-star guests from all the different bands are going to join us this week. And uh, got a lot of stuff working on that. And, you know, Pete hops in and we're all trying to get through the pandemic, keeping our mind, it helps me keep my mind busy doing stuff like this right now, because if it wasn't for this, I'd be on the couch watching hockey at night, football when it was on, and a lot of bonanza and gun smoke right now. Bonanza and gun smoke. Sydney, <laughs> plug, the, plug the podcast once again. 
Yeah, uh, you can find it at www.metalfromtheinside.com. We're available wherever you get your podcasts, the Metal From The Inside podcast. The YouTube channel is also really taken off. So if you guys prefer YouTube format, uh, be sure to subscribe to the Metal From The Inside uh, YouTube channel. It's been like getting just like crazy kind of blowing up a little bit. It's really awesome. So I appreciate all of you that have taken the time to watch it. Like I said, I got to chat with Mark uh, Weiss today. A bunch of really cool interviews coming up the next couple of weeks are jam packed so there's a lot coming so awesome. if you uh love hard rock and heavy metal which i'm sure all of you do uh be sure to check the podcast out so cool yeah butch butcher shop what's going yeah. on over there butcher shop on facebook my daily polls that i've been doing for 13 years which is incredible and i can't believe that i'm still thinking of shit to, to ask questions about after 13 years um just a place to come have fun i just bought music and that's it Cool. Lynn, Nick, Ryan, you guys want to plug anything? Nope, nothing to plug. I'm good. Nothing to plug? I'm good. Well, I'll plug some stuff. So uh, make sure. Uh, so Chris Allo and I, Thursday night, another episode of The Monster's Den coming up. Uh, it's all about serial killer films with Rich Catino. Uh, Chris and I are also working on doing a ranking the albums of Venom. So that's coming up. Uh, Ryan and I are going to be working on a ranking the albums of Manila Ooh. Road. Butch and I are going to be uh, doing a um, favorite one-two punch songs, two songs that come back and forth to, to, uh, that, that follow each other on down the kick ass, as well as reviewing the uh, UFO box set that's happening this week. Uh, mm -hmm. Sydney, myself, Rich Gatino are going to be ranking the, our 10 favorite albums of Ingbe Malmsteen. Uh, Nick uh -huh. and I got to circle back on that Borknagar album ranking and Lynn and I, yeah. Uh, have to now that Lynn is, is uh, feeling a little bit better we're going to get back to doing that episode of mellow songs by really heavy bands and uh, Steve I didn't mention you but we got to follow up that wonderful testament episode we did with something else soon so oh yeah yeah well. sure for sure man all that sure, man. and a lot of other stuff happening on the channel yes. including uh, this particular show a week from tonight so we'll see you guys all Ooh. then thanks everybody for watching we really appreciate this was a lot of fun our first ever live show and uh, drink more bourbon right what, drink yes. a half bottle on tonight Woohoo! <laughs> bourboning keep bourboning there we go Keep bourboning. There you go. So uh, for Steve, Chris, Sydney, Ryan, Butch, Nick, and Lynn, I am Pete Pardo. See you all next week. Take care. Bye. Ooh.